our story begins with two large towers standing side by side in Alog, Korea. The global gaming company Alog Korea has chosen real professionals in the online field for their revolutionary work. Scientists were running around the complex, bustling around setting up their computers. A boy appears in front of us, dressed in latex white clothes, he smiles and thinks that finally the beta test of the game. Not far from it are large white capsules, with various modifications. A girl with turquoise eyes and long hair appears in front of us, dressed in a latex suit and holding a small helmet next to her. The sudden girl turns around, looking away with interest. The boy happily dives into one of the capsules, the system says that user confirmation, recovery is started. A girl and a boy put on a helmet, close their eyes, their consciousness is carried away somewhere far away. A simulation that is similar to reality, a large castle appears in front of us, which is stormed by countless warriors, is this true, or is it a hoax? The boy looks in front of him, puzzled, and then wonders if this is the beginning. He looks down at his body, which is covered in steel armor, and the cloak unfurls behind him, and he thinks that this is what they call a game. The boy, looking at the countless warriors, continues to think that it is not at all different from real life. The warriors stand emotionlessly still, all of them with the same face. Suddenly they charge, spears in their hands. Archers run after them, drawing their bowstrings. One of the warriors drew his bow menacingly and pointed it at the sky. Behind his example, all the archers did the same and sent an arrow into battle. She was approaching the enemy soldiers at high speed, circling her own soldiers. Wars were climbing up the walls. The soldiers defending the fortress put up their shields trying to protect themselves from the approaching enemy soldiers. Blood suddenly spurted out. The arrow grazed the boy's face, and he stared ahead in fright. The boy, being in the capsule, clenched his teeth from the pain, and startled wondered what. He let out a high-pitched wail, and then wondered how much it hurt. The timer shows 6 minutes and 1 second. The scientist, looking at the monitor, indifferently replied that the game time was 6 minutes and 33 seconds. A contented man in a gray suit appears in front of us, hands folded, asking what about the subject's level of assimilation. The guy grits his teeth and continues to lie in the capsule, his hands and body bound by restraints. The boy's whole body is shaking. The scientist, turning to the man in the gray suit, replies that he is equal to 100%, he is sure that the last subject feels mortal pain. The man in the suit grinned with satisfaction, and then told them not to relax, and then they should feel the real simulator, which is called hell. The boy, being in the game was on his knees, holding his head with his hands, thought that this makes no sense, how is this even possible? Suddenly, an armored hand was approaching the boy at high speed. A gray-haired man appears in front of us, grabs the frightened boy by the scruff of the neck and shouts that he doesn't know how much longer he's going to behave like this. The old man frighteningly continues to shout that why, in such a situation, not a single order is heard from the general. The boy looks at the old man in fright and then asks for orders in a trembling voice. The boy shouts that everything is correct, an order. The boy, looking at the old man in horror, began to cry and then said that he should be allowed to leave here, he no longer wants to be in this game for a minute. There were countless soldiers, they were walking in a huge stream towards the castle, a man was standing behind them, looking at them, he said that he was so bored. Looking ahead, he furrowed his brows and then said that he didn't even think about the old friendship with his father. He smiled and added that he was going to lie using. He swung his axe with great force and pressed his feet to the ground, his body clad in bronze armor, a strong wind raged around him. That person was rushing towards the castle at great speed in the wind current. The warriors, fiercely defending their fortress, looked in horror at the approaching stream of wind. He destroyed several people at once in one fell swoop, and pieces of the fortress flew in different directions. Together, where the soldiers were standing, a large axe fell with great force. The wall was littered with mountains of corpses, a large axe was stuck in the wall, and the warriors looked at it with puzzled expressions. The heads of the fighters fell down from the wall. A man with a beard and an eye patch was approaching, his right eye glowing with blue energy. This giant swung his big axe and leapt at the crowd of soldiers. The warriors stared ahead in fear, unable to do anything. The boy watched this in fright, the giant said with a wide smile that at last the boy found this day, the general's son. The boy watched the giant in horror, he shouted for the giant to stop, because what was he even talking about, but the giant was rapidly approaching. The guy screamed loudly and desperately while in the capsule, and that was the beginning of an endless round of rebirths, 31 restarts. In the end, the only thing he could do in this hell, the guy standing there looked menacingly ahead and said that it was to fight to the end to survive. Someone pointed a sword at the boy, and he looked at it with a puzzled expression. There was a girl standing in front of him who calmly said that if the boy struggled, he would experience unbearable pain, it couldn't compare to anything he had ever felt before. The girl handed the boy the sword and asked him that he still wanted to fight. The boy glared at the girl. The boy swung the sword that was shining with the blue aura. He thought that no matter how many times he fought, he would come back to life no matter what. 
He leapt at the soldiers who were furiously running towards him, surrounded by blue energy. He thought that until the moment he finished this hellish battle with his own hands. A huge castle appears in front of us, which is attacked by countless warriors. Even death cannot prevail in a series of endless revivals. The battle of the young man begins now. We are taken to the children who are running away from school, shouting joyfully that the winter holidays have begun. The girls were happily talking and laughing among themselves, the boys were making fun of each other. One of the guys coming out of the school stopped, looking at the leaving classmates and ordinary students, he looked at them and just kept silent. This boy was wearing a school uniform with a red tie, looking at the children, he sadly asked why they are so cheerful, in any case, they are clearly waiting for the test trap more than for school. The boy took a deep breath and added that moreover, since he had an exam next year, the test questions would be much more difficult. The boy yawned, and then thought that for him, who had just begun to live, this world he replied that it was terribly boring. The boy was walking through the city, someone suddenly called him on the phone, he answered and asked who it was, and the phone answered that it was delivery and asked if the boy was at home now. The boy, looking around nervously replied that they just put it near the door, a voice came from the phone that he should get it personally. The boy, walking down the street, wondered if he had ordered something, and then replied that if they could wait a little longer, he would be home soon. The boy, taking the phone away from his ear, saw a delivery guy in front of him. He wondered what he had been doing for the last few days. The boy suddenly noticed that the delivery guy was holding a package with the Rose logo on it. At the same time, he ran as fast as he could to the delivery man. The delivery guy, taking the phone away from his ear, looked at the boy with a smile and said that since he was a student, could he look at his student ID. The boy showed the student tickets to the delivery guy at high speed. And then, taking the parcel, the delivery man rushed past him, looking puzzled after the fleeing boy. The delivery guy sighed in disappointment, and then said that his son, who is in elementary school, and this one from high school, both go crazy when they see the logo of this game company. The boy ran to his home at high speed. He quickly took off his shoes and ran to his room, loud slamming the door. The boy took out a knife and began to open the package. He admired the inside of the package, then said what it was. In front of the boy was a small virtual helmet. Next to it was a pair of bracelets. The boy read the instructions for VR equipment. On it was a picture of a man, and it showed how to properly put on bracelets and a helmet. The boy quickly put the bracelets on his hands, and then put a virtual helmet on your head. In the instructions, there was a line that after pressing the power button on the right wrist, you need to follow the instructions. The boy pressed a button on his wristband and then a voice sounded in his earphones, analysis of the user's biological data, please don't move. The boy looked forward with anticipation, afraid to move. He looked around his room for a few seconds without moving. Then a voice was heard thanking the boy and saying that also, Li Yu Shin congratulations on becoming a VIP beta tester. Suddenly, a beautiful girl with brown hair appeared in front of Li Yu Shin and looked at Li Yu Shin with a puzzled expression. Li Yu Shin was startled when he saw her. He waved his hands and shouted that who was she, he almost fell down from fright. The girl walked forward and spread her hands and said that if he was surprised in VR even this, then she is disappointed, dear user. The girl snapped her fingers, and Li Yushin watched in awe as the world around him began to change. In the next second, he was standing in front of the girl with space all around, and she snapped her fingers again. And they were on the beach. Li Yushin looked at her with a confused and puzzled expression. The girl pointed her hand forward and replied with a smile that she was introducing him to an unforgettable game of a log. The girl pulled out a card with the Rose logo on it, and then added that she almost forgot to hand over the invitation. She smiled and tossed a small bundle of paper to Li Yushin. Li Yushin was puzzled as he tried to catch the leaf and almost fell, and then he unfolded it, and the leaf began to shine. A small glowing model of the city appeared in Li Yushin's hands. He looked at her admiringly, and then, looking at her, he wondered if it was real. As we're transported to dinner, Li Yushin is sitting across from his parents and admiring how he's become a private tester for a new game from a major company. Out of so many candidates, there is a hot tofu soup on the table. Li Yushin's father eating soup doesn't care whether Yushin that he so wanted to become a tester or a tennis player as long ago. The boy answers with an embarrassed smile on his face, 15 days and 14 nights, and it will be a winter vacation, they will pay for an hour. The father, eating soup, indifferently replies that no. Hearing this, the kitchen fell silent. And then Li Yushin is startled and says what, but, but suddenly his father slams the spoon down on the table. Li Yushin and his mother watch in fear. And then the father angrily starts shouting that Li Yushin, even though he is a third year high school student, that he went through a psychological training course for a marine, what he achieved, a game, a private test, he is crazy. Li Yushin reaches out in frustration and whispers, mom. But Li Yushin's father suddenly starts shouting that no matter how many times he's told him that studying is hard work, every second counts. Li Yushin glares at his father, and then he gets up from the table and hits his hand on it and starts shouting that he understood, if you can't, then he won't go. 
His father turns angrily to Li Yuxin and yells at him that he hasn't finished eating. Where is he going? But at least he knows how important proper nutrition is at his age. Suddenly Li Yuxin's mother grabs her husband by the scruff of the neck and glares at him. Then, with a furrowed brow, she shouts at him to stop, because Li Yuxin said he wouldn't go. Li Yuxin trudges out of the kitchen in frustration as his mother glares at her husband. Li Yuxin's mother looks after him in frustration. He's so sad and thoughtful that he can't believe he's missing out on his only chance. And then he turns to his parents with a malicious smile and wonders what the hell is going on. Li Yuxin smiles and thinks about how he has a plan. We are transported to the city on the street. Li Yuxin comes out of the house and shouts that he's gone to the academy. Li Yuxin watches the route to a log Korea on the phone and then wonders what will happen after he leaves the house. We are taken to a public transport where Li Yuxin is standing among a large number of people. He makes a phone call and tells the teacher that yes, he and his family are going on a 15-day trip. The teacher asks where, and Li Yuxin wonders. And then looking at a poster hanging on public transport with mountains painted on it. Answers that in Quebec, Canada, the teacher on the phone says that oh my god, they will go to even colder places this winter, this is very strange, the boy is upset and thinks. The poster says that Quebec, Canada is the best place to live, and he wonders what it is anyway. Li Yuxin runs past the turnstile at high speed, then thinks that the problem with the academy is solved. Li Yuxin quickly runs up the stairs and thinks that of course he needs to prepare for the day when his parents call there. Li Yuxin runs up the stairs and thinks about how this is a problem of the future. He climbs higher and higher with a smile and thinks what's most important to him right now. The log Korea towers appear in front of us. The boy slowly steps inside. He is greeted by a large number of televisions with the company's name written on them, and he thinks that this is a place. Li Yuxin had a couple of newspapers in his back. He looked around the building in surprise and wondered if this was saving him from a boring routine. And there was a security guard standing next to him, looking thoughtfully at Li Yuxin. Suddenly, a security guard walked up to Li Yuxin and said, No matter what happened in this building, Li Yuxin smiled and showed the guard a bracelet. He poked his finger insistently at the bracelet and wondered if it was an invitation from the virtual kingdom. Then he held the wristband up to the test sensor. He went inside, and a building with a huge number of floors and various advertising signs appeared in front of him. Walking further, he saw a huge number of players, some wearing virtual helmets, some already wearing night armor, even a giant with a hammer. He looked at them all in silence. Two guys in night armor were walking to his right, smiling and chatting about something. Li Yuxin, looking at it enthusiastically, said that it was so cool. Suddenly, Li Yuxin saw that it was blurry. He looked ahead, and suddenly the man was gone. Li Yuxin, looking at this, asked what it was just now. Suddenly, a man with an eye patch appeared in front of Li Yuxin, surrounded by a blue strong energy. He gave him a startled look, and then whispered in a trembling voice, Is this really a bug? And the man with the eye patch smiled. Then he swung his huge axe. Li Yuxin flew to the side in fright. He looked back in horror, then asked what it was. The guy in the bronze armor was approaching Li Yuxin at high speed. Li Yuxin was desperately trying to run away from him, shouting at him to get behind him. In front of him, Li Yuxin saw a small house made up of pixels and dashed towards it, the huge man chasing after him. The man threw an axe at Li Yuxin, causing a column of dust to roll over. The man with the axe glared at Li Yuxin. Li Yuxin screamed in fright for the man to stop. Well, the man threw the axe behind his back with all his strength to hit Li Yuxin. There were tears in Li Yuxin's eyes, and he shouted out. A girl appeared out of nowhere, holding out her hand and saying stop. Li Yuxin was lying on the ground in fright, and the man with the axe stopped. The girl approached Li Yuxin with a smile and said that it looked intimidating, but it was a low-level opponent, so there was no need to be so scared. The girl with a smile on her face suddenly ran. Then she reached out and approached the man with the axe. She wriggled her arm, throwing pinpoint punches at the man, and it suddenly disappeared as Li Yuxin watched in fright. Then Li Yuxin smiled and said that she was a cameraman. The girl didn't say anything, just smiled. Li Yuxin looked at the girl enough and pointed at his neck with his finger, then asked why her voice was. The girl approached Li Yuxin and interrupted him, asking what was wrong with her voice. Suddenly, the girl began to disappear into space, and instead of her, a gray-haired man in a gray suit appeared. He smiled broadly and asked that his voice was too masculine. The man laughed and held out his hand and replied that he was sorry. He clicked on his wristband and said that it was just a joke, but Li Yuxin's reaction was very funny from the moment he entered. The players behind Li Yuxin were laughing, and he thought resentfully that this was a joke, so he was ashamed. Then he calmly wondered what else was going on. Li Yuxin smiled as he clenched his fists and replied that it was incredibly cool, as expected. The man held out his hand towards Li Yuxin and said that Li Yuxin's user was Li Haiyan Jiao, the general manager of testing, but it didn't matter, his introduction was late because Li Yuxin was late himself. Li Yuxin anxiously replied that he was sorry, but he thought that no way. 
He thought with a sad face that getting fired for being late was the worst case scenario. Lee Hyun Jai raised a finger and smilingly replied that there was no need to apologize, maybe now they will start their planned excursion. Lee Yu Shin exhaled calmly. Lee Hyun Jai pointed towards the elevator and said that it was their way, time was running out, he thought they should go to the office and make a presentation after the test, but Lee Yu Shin didn't mind. While getting into the elevator, Lee Yu Shin replied that of course he was late, Lee Hai and Jai replied that it was great, then maybe they would go straight to the test hall. Lee Yu Shin and Lee Hai and Jai were riding in the elevator, having a fun conversation. They were watched on video cameras by a man sitting in a chair, he answered on the phone that yes, he is sure, he trusts only the client. On the man's desk was an inscription, the branch manager Bernadotte kept saying that he asked to go and see. And then the manager turned off the phone. The manager is a fat man with white hair, he lit a cigar and then said that now he hopes the product they can sell is properly prepared. The manager picked up the remote control and then, looking at the video camera, pressed the button. As we are transferred back to the elevator, Li Haiyan Jiu apologizes to a smiling Li Yushin. Li Yushin and Li Haiyan Jiu walk around the complex and Li Yushin looks around happily. When they reach the end of the corridor, a touch panel appears in front of them where Li Haiyan Kaiyu enters something. Then they pass on, the program scans them and then skips them. The manager lights another cigar and says it's just business. Li Yushin and Li Haiyan Jiu are standing in the aisle, being scanned again. The door in front of them starts to open, and they hear the system message that a 12 is open. Li Yushin looks in front of him admiringly, a little embarrassed. A giant room appears in front of him, in the center of which is a huge column that is connected to the capsules. Li Yushin, standing with Li Haiyan Jiu, asks this in a puzzled manner. Li Haiyan Jiu waves and says there's one more thing. He points his hand forward and Li Yushin sees a latex white suit. He slowly walks over to it, looking at it carefully, and Li Haiyan Jiu says that after Li Yushin changes into a suit, let him go to the main hall, he will come back as soon as he checks the final preparations. Li Yushin looks ahead in shock and asks what is the real costume. He takes off his clothes and his bag, and then he zips the suit over his hands, and then on the neck. He looks ahead with a smile, already fully dressed in his suit. Then Li Yushin smilingly says that now. He starts waving his arms and says how cool it is. He runs forward through the complex toward the closed door. When I reach it, the door starts to open on its own. After walking inside, Li Yushin is blinded by the bright light standing in this room. Li Yushin covers his face with his hand and squints his eyes, then shouts that it's a light. After getting used to it, he slowly starts opening his eyes. A girl in the same suit appears in front of him, holding a helmet next to her. The girl has turquoise eyes and stands motionless, looking around in silence. Suddenly, she notices Li Yushin. Li Yushin looks at the girl in embarrassment, gradually blushing. He smiles, then shouts that it's like back then. The girl looks at Li Yushin with a puzzled frown. Li Yushin runs up to the girl and happily informs her that director Li Hai and Jiu, and this version of the cameraman is better than last night, the girl indignantly asks, especially what? Li Yushin sniffs the girl's hair, then says that as they passed on the smell of shampoo. Li Hai and Jiu, who is in another room, laughs and says through the earpiece that it's probably because she just washed her hair, because that's right, Miss Maria. Li Yushin looks at the girl with a puzzled expression and says, that's how it is. Maria indignantly asks what Li Yushin has heard, so let him wipe that expression off his face. Maria, her brows furrowed and her teeth bared, blushed, and then asked what or if Li Yushin wanted her to punch him in the nose. Li Yushin jumped to the side and shouted that he was sorry and sorry. He jumped back so hard that he fell on something. It was a small capsule that he had fallen into. The capsule lit up, and then the system message was heard that the user confirmation passed, recovery was started. Li Yushin happily examined the capsule and said what is it? But suddenly, Maria pointed her finger in the direction of the capsule that Li Yushin had fallen into and indignantly turned to director Li Haiyan Jiu and asked what was wrong with this stupid freak. Li Yushin indignantly looked in Maria's direction and asked bluntly. Director Li Haiyan Jiu happily replied through his earpiece that Ms. Maria, he was very sorry, but due to problems with their server, they had no choice but to merge the online and simulation servers. Maria indignantly shouted that she was online, just don't let them tell her that this freak is an ordinary user, they are completely crazy. Li Yushin glared in Maria's direction, then asked why she kept calling him a freak. Maria indignantly raised her finger and replied that if the superiors found out that Director Li Haiyan Jiu had put an ordinary user in the training simulator. Director Li Haiyan Jiu awkwardly apologized through his earpiece and said that however, because of the last incident, they had to do it, otherwise the simulator wouldn't work at all. While Maria was discussing something with Director Li Haiyan Jiu, Li Yushin was pressing buttons on the capsule's tablet, he wondered if they should have started by now, why would they say something that he didn't understand at all. 
Maria continued to yell that director Lee Hai and Jai wanted to tell her that she would have to do this to him, but she never would. Suddenly, the smiling director Lee Hai and Jai shouted that he understood, then starting today, they will have access to the training simulator. Maria stopped shouting and glared angrily to the side, while Lee Yushin looked in front of him with a puzzled expression. Director Lee Hai and Jai threw out saying that how could they cancel everything. Maria gritted her teeth angrily, then picked up the helmet. She looked away and put it on her head, then said that it was an incident. Even if they didn't think about it, she would make sure that Director Lee Hai and Jai was punished no matter what. Director Lee Hai and Jai smiled and then replied that he thanked Maria for her generosity. Maria glared at the side and then gave Director Lee Hai and Jai the middle finger. She put on her helmet completely and then lay down in the cell. Once inside the cell, it began to close. Director Lee Hai and Jai sighed and said that they would also be dealing with the controls as the game progressed, so let's get ready, dear Li Yushin. Li Yushin looked puzzled as he put on his helmet and said, okay, and then lay down in the cell. Director Li Hai and Jiu shouted with a mad smile that he was starting server management. Scientists randomly began to run around the complex, including all the processes. The cameras that Li Yushin and Maria were in started up. One of the scientists shouted that landscape generation was taking place, the other shouted that it was being checked by the assimilation departments. Li Yushin, while in the cell, looked up, and the inside of the glass of the cell turned red. He looked away in fright and asked why it was so hot. Director Li Hai and Jiu smilingly told them not to worry, soon the energy from the exchange between the program and the body would dissipate. The scientists shouted that the assimilation rate had reached 70%. Li Yushin lay with his eyes closed as he continued to shout that 80%. Maria was also lying in the cell, and she heard a scream, which is 90%. The scientists shouted that the assimilation rate was 100%, and everything was ready. Director Li Hai and Jiu happily shouted for them to start. Scientists, looking at the tablets in which the indicators of Li Yushin and Maria were visible, shouted that the countdown was 3 2 1. Li Yushin lay silently in the cell. The same went for Maria. The simulator has been activated. Li Yushin's consciousness and Maria's consciousness began to shift somewhere. Director Li Hai and Jai watched with a smile, telling them to enjoy the adventure and have a good time. A drop of water fell, and Li Yushin wondered what that sound was, where it came from, this feeling so familiar. He opened his eyes and pondered what he definitely realized was rain, torrential rain, as clearly. Raindrops fell on Li Yushin's face again and again. He bared his teeth and began to shiver as he realized that the rain was still very cold. He looked in front of him with displeasure and then shouted shivering from the cold. He was definitely lying in a capsule, so why was he so cold? He looked down at his body, then realized that he was also wearing a suit of armor. He abruptly turned sideways, and his large red cloak began to flutter in the wind, and he wondered where the cloak came from. He looked in front of him with a puzzled expression, and then said that since that's the case, this is the place. Li Yushin looked around with interest, looking at the puddles, and then wondered what exactly. A large castle appears in front of us. A warrior standing on the castle wall pointed to the side and shouted, General, the enemy troops have reached the plains. Li Yushin looked in front of him with a puzzled expression, greatly frightened, and then shouted out that the enemy, he wondered if he wasn't in training. Suddenly, an old man clad in armor ran up to Lai Yushin and shouted General, Lai Yushin turned around in a puzzled manner. The old man menacingly said that if you just wait any longer, it will create excitement among the soldiers, he asks you to hurry up and give out orders. Li Yushin frowned and asked, General, what's the order? The soldiers, standing in the pouring rain, looked at Li Yushin without emotion. Li Yushin thought that it seemed to be an unusual armor, he smiled and said that it was meant for the commander. Li Yushin turned around, puzzled, and then asked what they said was the planes. Li Yushin looked around, then added that however, there was only the sea around the castle. Looking into the distance, the old man continued to say that the sea, even God would wish that it was only black sea waters. Li Yushin looked at the old man with a puzzled expression, then asked what. He looked down in fright and saw an ocean of soldiers, he wondered if it wasn't the sea, if so, what it was, what the old man was talking about. Li Yushin watched in horror as countless soldiers approached the castle. They all looked alike. Soldiers with spears were running to the right in the direction of the castle. Archers ran after them, drawing their bowstrings. And then there were thugs with axes. Li Yushin looked at them in fright, then pointed to the side with his finger and shouted that how could there be so many of them. The old man angrily shouted for the general to come to his senses, even if the situation seems hopeless, he asked to quickly give the order and lead them. Li Yushin looked puzzled and ran to the side in fright. He stopped and looked ahead in fright, shouting that he was so scared to death, why was he even yelling at the NPC? He looked around, puzzled, and then shouted that there must be a control panel or interface windows somewhere. The soldiers with shields were closing in on the castle. They formed a huge line and lined up in front of him. A soldier standing on the gate pointed his finger in the direction of the soldiers and shouted that the enemy had already formed up to attack. The old man looked at him in fright. 
Then the general shouted angrily. Li Yuxin frowned and said that hell, he didn't have any mana pool for the game, so what should he do? The old man looked at Li Yuxin with a puzzled expression. And then I turned to him and shouted that he couldn't just sit back and let the enemy attack first. And he shouted for everyone to get into battle formation and the archers to get ready. The soldiers on the walls ran to the edge, and the archers drew their bowstrings. The old man shouted menacingly so that everyone would remember that they were fighting to the last breath. The soldiers raised their swords and shouted loudly. Only Li Yuxin stood there puzzled and didn't know what to do. The old man opened his mouth wide and shouted too. The archers drew their bowstrings. Then they fired a hail of arrows at the enemy. Arrows flew out of the city walls. They whizzed upward. They fell on the enemies in countless numbers. The soldier was hit right in the eye by an arrow, and he screamed in pain, blood flying everywhere. The warriors tried to cover themselves with their shields, but they were killed one by one. They screamed helplessly. The arrows struck them again and again as they fell dead. The enemy archers also drew their bowstrings. Countless archers were ready to throw arrows towards the castle. The darkness of arrows abruptly flew towards the castle. They mixed together with the sky as if the sky had darkened. Countless arrows fell on the castle, and the old man watched in horror. Seeing this, he shouted loudly for the knights to raise their shields. All the warriors standing on the castle walls raised their shields. Arrows whizzed across the knights' accounts. The arrows continued to fly further, hitting residential buildings and knights who didn't have time to raise their shield. There were so many arrows that the knights couldn't even save their shields. The enemy knights took advantage of the fact that the knights stopped firing at them and shouted. And then, armed with swords, they rushed to storm the fortress. They were already at the castle gates. The warrior was running up the wooden stairs. Several knights were standing on the ladder, preparing to attack, carried by countless warriors. The warrior, holding a rope in his hand, prepared himself by getting into position. And then he instantly shot forward. They are holding a rope attached to the ladder behind them and quickly tried to jump and climb the tower. With their backs to the ladder, they tried to attach the rope to the edge of the castle. One of the warriors was flying up quickly, holding a ladder. He saw something in front of his face and was horrified. From above, huge rocks were thrown down by the knights. A huge boulder, developing speed flying down. Then he hit one of the knights directly, breaking the ladder beneath him. The knights who were under the castle gate fled in terror when a large boulder fell down. The old man, looking at the countless soldiers, shouted that they should not be allowed to get up and stop them. Knights standing on the walls threw stones down, archers tried to kill everyone who could even climb the stairs. The warriors who tried to climb the stairs began to fall down, and the stairs broke with them. Those who were not killed by the stone were stabbed by the knights from above with spears. The soldier tried to restrain the spear, but in the end could not, he was pierced. Behind him was a comrade who leaned on him and leaped at the knights. The knight watched in dismay as the black armored warrior sliced him in half with great force. The guy lost his helmet and then fell to the ground dead. There were tears in his eyes. Looking at the dead knight, Li Yuxin was startled to think that this was definitely just a game. He stood silently, taking no action, and watched the process. If this is not true, then it is definitely very similar to reality, everything is real or it is a hoax, a huge number of knights continued to storm the castle. Li Yuxin was startled to think that it was really online. The enemy archer drew his bowstring. And then, together with their comrades, they released a flying arrow at great speed. The warriors continued to storm the castle, trying in every possible way to climb the stairs. The knights covered with shields, protecting themselves from arrows, and enemies who still managed to climb the stairs. Li Yuxin, looking at the huge number of corpses of his comrades, wondered what the game world he was currently in. Suddenly, blood spurted out, and an arrow shot at great speed past the body of Li Yuxin's eyes. Then it hit the warrior behind him in the neck. Li Yuxin sighed in dismay. And then I touched my eye and saw the blood on my hand. He desperately screamed that he was in so much pain, it was just a game, why was he feeling pain? The old man noticed that Li Yuxin was injured, and Li Yuxin thought that he couldn't even tell if the pain was real. The old man shouted loudly, what are the warriors doing, they need to protect the general. The knights rushed towards the general with their shields. They held up their shields in front of Li Yuxin, sending a hail of arrows flying at them. The arrows kept coming closer and closer at a great speed. Looking at them, Li Yuxin screamed in fright. The knights raised their shields tightly, and then the arrows flew at them at great speed. Li Yuxin held his head while under the cover of the knights, breathing heavily. He clutched his head and shouted that this whole situation must be a mistake in the system. The knights looked at Li Yuxin in puzzlement, and Li Yuxin kept saying that he couldn't even find the control window. Suddenly he was afraid, it dawned on him, he shouted that he was really stuck in this damn place. A knight with red hair appears in front of us, he waved his sword and shouted, Knights frozen, the enemy archers stopped firing, let them go back to their positions. The knights immediately ran to the wall, leaving Li Yuxin sitting on the floor. Li Yuxin was sitting on the floor, clutching his head, when suddenly, a hand quickly started moving towards him. 
The old man grabbed Li Yushin by the scruff of the neck and shouted that how much longer was he going to behave like this. He continued to shout loudly that why in such a situation, not a single order was heard from him. Li Yushin gave the old man a hopeless look, then asked for more orders. It dawned on him and he shouted that everything was correct, an order. Looking at the old man, he began to cry, and then told them to let him go out, he didn't want to be in this game for another minute. The old man looked at Li Yushin with a puzzled expression, and then started shaking him, shouting, what the hell is he talking about? The old man and Li Yushin stayed on the fortress wall. Countless warriors were closing in on the castle. A man was watching it all, and he said he was so bored. He furrowed his brows and said he wouldn't even think about his old friendship with his father. He smiled and said that he was going to see Li Yushin. Suddenly, he swung his huge axe and kicked off from the ground. The axe, cutting through the air, raced after him. This man hit the air with an axe with great force and began to blow away his own soldiers. He whirled his axe around himself, creating an incredible flow of air. Then, with great force, he threw it forward. The axe, sweeping away everything in its path, rushed towards the fortress. Those trying to defend the fortress looked at the approaching danger in fear, and then the axe hit the fortress with great force. The warriors watched in dismay. The axe, circling around itself, killed one knight after another, and then he thrust with great force into the fortress in front of the knights. The old man, along with Li Yushin, watched in awe. Like a huge axe, it was stuck into the fortress where countless corpses were lying on it. The knight's heads flew down from the fortress. Pushing off from them, a huge man in bronze armor ran up. The knight's head flew down with great force. A bronze armored thug was approaching the fortress, his right eye glittering and his left eye bandaged. The big man snatched up his axe. The knights stared ahead in fear, unable to do anything. A giant in bronze armor was swinging an axe at them from above. Li Yushin shouted in fright that this silhouette, he definitely saw it somewhere before. The giant swung at the knights. Suddenly, Li Yushin had an epiphany, and then he said that he definitely remembered this black one. Black one flew into the knights at high speed, killing several of them at once. The knights, looking fearfully at their dead comrades, tried to run away and shouted that they had to run. The old man held out his sword in front of the knights and shouted for everyone to stay where they were, if they retreated, they would be swept away. Blackwind continued to climb up the knights' heads. He swung at the helpless knights with great force. The knights along with the old man watched in fear, unable to do anything about it. Then, Blackwind swung his axe in front of him with great force. He smilingly asked that they really thought that they would avoid this fate if they prepared against him. Blackwind started hacking at the knights one by one, swinging to the right, and then to the left. A huge number of knights soared up, blood spurting out from their bodies. They were instantly chopped into numerous pieces. The old man's head flew down with the other knights' heads. Li Yushin stared ahead in horror as he looked at the numerous corpses of his comrades. Blackwind slowly walked towards Li Yushin with an axe on his back and then asked what Li Yushin was doing there, he would just hide behind this meat. Li Yushin looked at Blackwind in fright and Blackwind went on to say that Li knew that his father was weaker than him. Blackwind glared at Li Yushin, then added that he remembered how passionate he was, which was why he burned it. Blackwind drew his sword from its scabbard. The sword reflected Li Yushin's terrified face. Blackwind swung his sword and shouted that it was a pitiful sight. Looking at the approaching sword, Li Yushin wondered what if he died like this. Can he finally get out of the game? A man with big black hair and a beard, with a blindfold over one of his eyes. He looks at the boy and says, why don't he take this sword and stand up? Li Yushin covers himself with his hands. He says that he then removes his hands and starts looking around. He thinks to himself that he is not dead. Then his gaze falls on the huge sword. It's stuck in the ground right between Li Yushin's legs. He looks at it in surprise and says it's a one and a half year old. And a one-eyed man standing next to a huge axe and a blue cloak. Looking at Li Yushin, he says that it's a shame for him to cut up the weapon child. He keeps looking at him and says that at least now he's dead. It's as if he has his father's blood in him. After which, Li Yushin looks at this knight with obvious bewilderment. He thinks to himself what's wrong with this guy, and then he grits his teeth and talks about who he is. Is he grabbing that sword? Barely rising to his feet, he grits his teeth and says that he even knows about his father if he dares to say such things. Then, taking the sword, he shouts that if he is the villain in this game, he just needs to kill him. He gets in later with this sword and says what the hell does someone like him know about his father, and he asks him to shut his mouth. Neil is standing in a sword pose. He thinks to himself that it's a burning anger-like thing. He gripped the hilt of his sword even harder and says that's why he's not scared. For the first time since I got here, with the many corpses around this man, he thinks that what's more, the man on the other hand, who completely destroyed their camp with just a few attacks, looks like a monster, looking at how huge it is. And this one-eyed man starts to smile as he looks at Li Yushin, saying that this is how it should be. He also takes a stance next to his axe. 
He smiles and says it's a facial expression that adds flavor. After which, Li Yuxin, looking at him, starts shouting, thinking to himself that he is attacking. He shouts to Tom that since it's all come to this, then he will fight him the way he wants. After which, a one-eyed man with an axe jumps on top of him. All Li Yuxin keeps shouting. Suddenly, the hilt of his weapon appears near his eyes. He is very surprised by this, after which he looks at his hands that are at the top and thinks to himself that he dropped it. Holding his hands up, looking down, he screams that he was really that heavy. He looks at the hilts of this weapon, then it is cut open, and he does not understand what is happening. The one-eyed man tells him that he is no better than a fool, making a hit. But the director smiles, looks ahead, and says that's all. He's standing in a huge room with a lot of people sitting at computers, and he's watching K at the monitor in the center where Liu Xin is lying down. It shows the time of 0, 6, 1, 33 seconds. And one of the men with glasses, looking at the monitor, says that the game time was 6 minutes 33 seconds. After that, the director continues to smile and says what about the subject's level of assimilation. They look at the capsules that Li Yuxin is lying in. He is strapped down and dressed in a white suit. He starts twitching, gritting his teeth, and then the bespectacled man turns to the director and says that he is equal to 100%. He is sure that the subject feels deadly pain. After which the director looked up smiling and said that then turning into vegetables is quite enough for today. He turns to his team and tells them to get ready and go right to the manager. He tells them to restart the system immediately, after which he looks at the monitor and tells them not to relax and let them feel the real emotions. What is called hell? Someone asks their son why he's not at the table yet. After that, a plate of delicious soup is placed on the table. Speaking of which, it was made by the beloved Twenjin Chige. There is a lot of food on the table and a man sitting next to him is looking at a newspaper. Next to her, a mother in a pink apron and brown hair says that really only let out. He doesn't say that he will go to the academy without even trying. Then the father, looking at him, says that he is completely crazy, again played with his toys all night. Li Yuxin, who is wearing a blue sweatshirt and carrying a bag. He listens to his parents scolding him, telling them not to yell at him before eating, and he doesn't grumble. While Li Yuxin is thinking about how he's finally back in the real world, he puts his hand on the chair and pushes it back, thinking to himself that this is his chair, or he is sitting and eating. He puts his face to the food and thinks it's the smell of childhood. He starts to smile and yells that it's actually mom's food. After that, the man next to him looks at Li Yuxin and says that maybe then he will eat it himself and says that he is very boring. And his mother, clearly angry, says he's had enough. Li Yuxin takes a spoonful along with the soup, looking at the food and thinking to himself, what does it mean that he's actually back to his daily routine? After that, a drop of water drips onto the soup spoon and Li Yuxin is surprised by it. And all the food starts to fill with water. The father and mother, looking at the ceiling, say that they are really being drowned and what kind of water is this? Li Yuxin also looks up and says that's not the case. And the three of them stand there in shock, looking at the sky and the rain that has appeared. Li Yuxin keeps looking at the sky that's raining and yells about how it's not true. He wonders if this is an illusion or a dream. After that, he, who is in the capsule, continues to clench his teeth and tremble. He shouts that this can't be wearing knight's armor. After which, when he comes to, he watches as one of the knights wounded the other with his weapon directly in the chest through the armor. He looks and sees, thinking to himself that it's happening again, watching the knights in front run, fighting against other warriors. He watches the fights and thinks to himself that hell is real. He watches as one of the knights stabs the other as he tries to stab him, as a crowd of people attacks one of them, jumping from above, and how one of the dark knights took up his weapon and pierced the chest of one of the other knights wearing brown armor. Li Yuxin, looking at all this, sinks down on the floor, hitting the floor with his fist, thinking that he has been pulled inside again. He calls it all crap. After that, he says that this is simply impossible, he can't stand it, sitting on his knees and hitting the floor with his fists. He hears the sound of arrows flying, and then he notices them. One of the soldiers, the generals say, what's on top? Li Yuxin turns around, looking at those arrows as they are already flying over. He sees a huge number of arrows flying towards him in the sky. After that, one of the knights with long hair and a huge sword runs along the wall. She cuts through a lot of arrows with a single blow. But one of the arrows still hits this knight right in the head, hitting his helmet. After that, this helmet with an arrow flies off. And Li Yuxin notices this knight's face, he sees his huge hair, and he realizes that it was a girl with beautiful long hair, and knight's armor. A girl with a huge sword and very long hair approaches Li Yuxin. He is still on his knees looking at it, after which he asks where it came from. He looks at her face and thinks to himself, isn't she the same age as him? He looks at her purple eyes with purple hair, and sitting on his lap, he seriously says what she wants to say. He sees her hands at her sides and thinks to himself, no. More importantly, this monster will come again soon. Remembering the black man with one eye and the axe that killed him, 
smiling with one of his swings. After that, he gets scared, he goes under while he remembers it. He's standing next to a lot of soldiers in blue and brown uniforms. A man with white hair is standing next to him. Li Yushin looks up at the sky and shouts that the CEO will hear him. He asks to stop this game immediately, starting to cry in panic, saying that it should happen now. Then the gray-haired knight, whether Yushin is enough. He shouts at him, looking at him, that the general should calm down and give orders. And so it only creates excitement among the soldiers. He continues to yank at Li Yushin as he looks at him in panic, and the latter continues to yell that he is the general's son of that person. We are gray-haired, the man starts to worry and say that he is his son, because he is the winner of Black Winda. On the novel, the one looks at him or the gray-haired man says, because it's true. After that, while those two were sorting it out, nearby, brown uniformed knights raise their weapons. They notice this, and then Li Yushin starts yelling that he's done talking nonsense. He really thinks that an ordinary high school student can handle that monster alone. He starts jumping and waving his arms, yelling that he's not even their general, he just wants to get out of this shitty game. After which, the knights, along with the white-haired man, stand with their mouths open in shock. And through the crowd, a girl with purple hair runs towards him, she runs right up to him and grabs him by the shoulders with her hands. She looks directly at him as everyone watches, and Li Yushin looks at her and listens as she tells him that the general, does this all seem like a game to him? And then she would dare to tell him something. She lowers her head and says it's not a game, it's real. He looks at her and remembers the one-eyed man attacking from behind as she keeps telling him that in order to survive, he has to fight. He notices him, watches him smile as he gets closer to them, and thinks to himself that he doesn't. Then a lot of soldiers are swept away until they don't understand what's going on. A man cuts a piece of meat with a knife, holding a small piece with a fork. He takes this small piece and takes a bite, then says it's only a matter of time before they get back to New York. And that's how it's all thanks to him, the CEO. This director is sitting at a table with a lot of food. He eats while watching Li Yushin fight the wars in the background, saying that he is flattered by the branch manager, while another man, who is the manager, holds a glass of wine, raises it and says that there is only one thing left to do. It's a plump, white-haired man holding a glass. He smiles and says that Maria is a cheeky noble girl. The headmaster smiles back at him, looking at him and telling him that yes, they are currently waiting for Maria to fall asleep. She remembers lying in a capsule wearing a white suit. And what is next to Li Yushin in the other capsule while he continues to shake very hard, gritting his teeth. He continues to shake, and the director says that the simulation will end when Li Yushin loses the will to live. After that, the head of the branch takes a piece of meat, brings it to his mouth, and asks him, what if Maria wakes up? Can I manage them simultaneously? The fact that I'm a piece of meat removing the fork says that if a malfunction occurs, simulation is possible. After that, it is wiped with a napkin, and he says they shouldn't let that small chance ruin the finale. The head of the branch holding a glass and cutting a piece of meat on a plate looks at the director, and with a clearly displeased face, he says that there is a small probability that he is talking. He takes the knife that he used to cut the meat and holds it up while there is still juice left on it and says that, for example, while watching the director's back, the screen shows the events that Li Yushin is participating in. He says he got a glimpse of that high school student sitting on the floor looking scared. Then, looking at the man with one eye, the head says that we can say that the probability of the winner is Blackwin. After which, the one-eyed man throws that same huge sword to Lai Yushin while he stands in fear. The director says that he understands, and then someone calls him. He turns around, and Li Yushin, who is looking at the one-eyed man, keeps shouting in fear that the CEO can hear him, and he knows that they are watching him. And if he can't get him out of this game yet, then at least he should improve at least his swordsmanship or basic skills fucking specifications. After which, the head of the vest's branch holds up a napkin to the map while listening to what Li Yushin is saying. And the director is the same, observing this, says that the probability that the manager is so worried about. Watching the one-eyed man swing his axe straight at Li Yushino, while he was grabbing his sword, does it say that it is zero, and Li Yushin in the capsule starts screaming really hard. He somehow picks up the sword, looking down at it, and that man stabs him, crushing him and breaking the sword into several pieces. After which, Li Yushin in the capsule continues to scream very hard. The director looks at this and smiles, saying that he knew it, right. The head of the branch is also holding a glass, smiling, and the director continues to say how immortal he is. After which, the one-eyed man lifts up Li Yushin's head with one hand. He drags him walking forward, and the director says that even if his DNA chain breaks down, the fact that he's a disaster won't change. Then the one-eyed man throws Li Yushino right into the abyss. To the soldiers who are storming this wall, Li Yushin falling down to all those angry soldiers looks at him, played, chews and smiles, saying that he said everything correctly and he shouldn't have bothered, after which he offers to finish their meal. The director smiles as he picks up a piece of meat on his fork, 
After that, the simulator completes two sessions. The simulation starts. Li Yuxin is standing in high school armor with a sword stuck next to him. He thinks to himself, what the hell is this? And what time is this already? He looks at this sword and thinks to himself that he has faced death countless times, until a raincoat falls next to him and he thinks it's him. He looks at himself from the side and from the past, as he beat on the floor and screamed. He stands and stares, thinking that for the first time, fear has taken hold of him and he almost threw up. After which, he recalls the next time he prayed and begged for forgiveness for everything and begged for mercy. I think he was begging for his life. Then he remembers three attempts while the other two are still doing their stuff. Total, how he shouted that it should be him and why they did this to him. He thinks, looking at this, that he was completely desperate. Then he stood in a white space. He remembers many times when he was killed and all the things he did, thinking they were terrible. And how stupid and cowardly of him. Remembering how he'd been on his knees, running, screaming, begging for mercy, smiling, choking himself. After which, he screams and thinks that he was constantly trying. So far, this one-eyed man with an axe is standing in front of him, and he is trying to solve the problem repeatedly, dying or killing himself. And watching it all from the sidelines, he thinks that despite this, he looks at this man with one eye, and the man tells him that his father wasn't such a slob. He smiles and says that he was much hotter. Then he thinks he can't even get away from that black lion. And the man with one eye picks up the axe and lifts it up. For now, Li Yuxin thinks that's why. He remembers how he died one time he was cut, thinking about what one he is. Two and three, while the man with one eye cuts through all his past attempts, killing each time. Just one move, smiling and killing, cutting into many pieces. While he screamed in pain and did not understand what was happening, trying to somehow escape and defend himself. He thinks to himself that he has lost count, stood by these pointless attempts. He watches it and remembers how he screamed and keeps thinking about how he was dying anyway, remembering everything that happened before. Then he remembers how he was killed, and the man with one eye says that he is disappointed in him. He is clearly angry and says if his father knows that he wasn't like that standing right in front of him. And Li Yuxin thinks to himself to shut up and not say a word anymore, and what does he even know? Li Yuxin stands late at night. He lowers his head and thinks to himself that he is just a game NPC. He remembers Maria and how she stood in front of him, thinking that in order to survive, he must fight. He lowered his head and pondered, thinking that this reality, and let them not make him laugh. He remembers sitting with his friends in the computer club and playing, smiling and laughing, talking to them, because going to the game rooms with friends after school was his reality. He remembered sitting at the same table with his family and eating their meal while talking, thinking that dinner is at the same table, and it wasn't like that at all. I remember what's happening now, the number of times he's died standing next to his weapon stuck in the ground, and remembering the man with one eye, how he swings in the director, he thinks that it is true that this was all done by the same director. He grabs the sword and starts shouting, running forward. He picks it up somehow, still shouting. Then he tries to stab the man, but a piece of the sword flies off after he hits it. They get tired in shock and think to themselves what just happened and the one-eyed man launches an attack with his axe, hitting Li Yushino on the head, while he's standing there with a sword. The shocked man begins to breathe heavily. He fell to his knees, holding a piece of his remaining sword, and he stands over him and says that when he talked about his father, a very serious face, an obvious sadness continues to say that he was much hot-tempered. Looking at the sky, how white it is, Li Yushin gets up from his knees and says that it was like that. He smiles and says that now he understands. Gritting his teeth, he tells him to listen to him, he's not afraid of him anymore. He looks at this one-eyed man and says that it doesn't matter how many times he gouges out his eyes and tears his body apart. He wouldn't run away from it. Covered in blood, smiling, he got up from his knees and says that after so many resurrections, he is confident that he can kill him. As the other looks at him in surprise, Li Yuxin thinks to himself that this is the only thing left in him. After that, he is killed with a single swipe, and he thinks to himself that from the moment he became an endless resurrection. After that, standing on the wall, making a blow with his axe, it shattered the floor, and there's nothing left, just smoke. After that, everything around sparkled with blue shades. It was 31 sessions. As Li Yuxin stands there, he thinks to himself that there's only one way to survive here, if he's not mistaken. He says out loud, looking ahead, that you need to fight back and put your life on the line. He watches as they give him a sword. Then he takes it and Maria, who gives it to him, tells him that he will not be able to match it, even if he fights back, and she doesn't know how much it will hurt. She hands him this sword, stood beside him, and tells him whether he will still fight. While Li Yuxin is looking at her, charged with rage and self-confidence, he looks at the hilt of this weapon. Li Yuxin opens his eyes. He looks up and sees a lot of arrows shattering into small pieces in front of him. He sees Maria with her punch. The arrows flying at Lai Yushino are broken. Then he looks at her, and she tells him, calling him a general, that he said he was going to fight. 
and she looks at Li Yuxian with a serious face and says that she will lead him and protect him. He held his sword as he rose from his knees, thinking to himself that why should he pretend to care about this inscription. After which he says that's right, he remembers the smiling general and how many deaths he went through in his panic. Fears of trying to escape. Thinking to himself that he would no longer follow the order and act, so that you don't have to wait for someone to help you. Thinking that in the end, he grabs his sword, stands up from his knees, and, looking straight ahead with a serious face, says that he has no choice but to fight. After which, many soldiers, led by a white-haired man, shout that the general has given the order. He shouts confidently to the troops to prepare for battle, and a lot of knights are dressed in brown armor, taking their weapons and shields. And he starts screaming, mouths open, fighting the enemies who are climbing the wall. Many are hit by arrows, and they defend with shields, while enemies attack with their weapons directly on people with shields. The allied troops standing behind the human shields point their weapons in front of them many soldiers are injured falling to the ground while a huge number of enemies continue to attack them. They are attacked unhindered, killing many of them. And Li Yuxin holding his sword and standing in a stance is shaking very much. He grits his teeth as he looks at everything that's happening and thinks about how he was fed up with this battlefield, but now he's used to it, he's not going to die. Maria stands next to him and tells him, looking at him, that the general barks the same thing. Then she can teach him, still looking at Li Yuxin. Li Yuxin watches as she stands and stares at him while a lot of enemies are running towards her and says that he will teach her the basics of hand-to-hand -hand combat. She grabs her huge sword, holding it up and says that first. After which, she makes a huge swing, killing many people who run at him. She changes the grip of her sword and continues to attack enemies, killing one by one, erasing them. Running up to the center of the enemies is her. She keeps hitting, climbing up, and a blue light appears in her eyes. Li Yuxin watches as Maria runs straight into the enemies, killing them one by one. Maria's eyes start to burn blue, and she says that even if he reaches his limit, swing the sword all the way to the end. He thinks to himself, looking at all this, that she is strong. The white-haired man shouts that there is no turning back now, and they must fight with their lives on the line, standing in front of their knights. After which, many knights start shouting, raising their weapons to the sky, and they begin to fight with opponents, standing wall to wall. Many of them are killed, but at the same time, many opponents are killed by crossing their weapons. Li Yuxin, watching this battle, and then one of the enemy knights attacks him from above, and he notices this very surprised. He grabs the sword in his hands and blocks the knight's attack. He looks at how he was able to block the attack with his sword and thinks to himself what he did. He looks at this knight who has gritted his teeth and thinks to himself, gritting his teeth, what is he now and why is he? He thinks about why he doubts such a situation. After that, Maria hits him with her blade, cutting him. Speaking of which, in two, he shouldn't hesitate yet during the battle. Lots of blood splatters everywhere after this tradition has died. Li Yuxin, who has raised his sword, stands in shock, not understanding what is happening. He stands and looks at this dead knight and thinks to himself that if he wants to survive, he will have to kill him, and that's exactly how it is. Looking at the dying knight and the way he looks at him, he starts to cry all over bleeding. He sees another knight take up his sword and run forward, shouting, and Li Yuxin thinks to himself, what if he kills him? After pointing the sword at his opponent, Li Yuxin starts shouting and running towards him, thinking to himself that then he will be killed. He manages to stab this knight with his sword before it reaches him. He thrusts his weapon even harder right into the opponent's body. He gets right up to him, and he starts coughing up blood. He hugs him, gritting his teeth, and thinking about what he did, chuckles a little. This knight then falls to his death. Li Yuxin, as he falls, this body thinks to itself that he only killed one person, and it was so difficult. He notices that a sword was thrust into his body while he was killing him, and he starts spitting blood too, pulling that sword out of his chest. After that, Rano starts spitting blood, and he leans on his sword. Li Yuxin grits his teeth as he looks at his wound and wonders to himself if he can survive here. Then Maria raises her sword and says the last one. Li Yuxin notices her while watching. He turns around and sees her holding her sword, and then someone hits her and she disappears. He sees Maria's eyes glow blue. In a crowd of enemies, he cuts many of them, taking another sword in two hands. Maria says that he should never lose hope and returned home cutting through another opponent while looking directly at Li Yushino. After that, she starts to scream, and she is pierced by many spears and enemies. By hanging it on these same spears, lots of knights standing around and stabbing her. Li Yushin notices this and gets very scared. Maria raises up her huge sword, after which she jumps into the thick of enemies, cutting many of them. In the second hand, she takes the other sword and tells him that the last ones. Li Yushin then turns his attention to her as he watches her slash through enemies. Itertas says, looking at him with a shining blue eye, that he should never give up hope of returning home. After that, Li Yuxin looks at this and breathes heavily and thinks to himself that he's going home. 
He thinks that this NPC is just the victim of Agnetha created by the headmaster. Li Yuxin then tells her if she knows what home means. He shouts to her severely wounded that even she doesn't know the reason why he is fighting, and she shouldn't act like she knows everything. After that, Maria looks at him with her own eyes, and he, looking back, thinks to himself what kind of look it is, very surprised. Maria tells the general that she is. Then they hit her and she starts screaming. Let him not see how many spears pierced her, soldiers standing nearby. While others are watching, Li Yuxian is shocked by what he saw, gritting his teeth as he watches Maria die on the spears suspended. He thinks to himself what she meant. After which, Li Yuxian picks up her sword and starts screaming, thinking that what the hell was she trying to tell him. He raises his sword up. After that, he begins to fight off many enemies attacking him. Surrounded, he thinks to himself that he needs to fight. He swings his sword, killing a lot of them, thinking that just like she said, as long as he can swing it. He keeps attacking. Naturally, he thinks to himself that he will do this until the very end. After that, he is very surprised and thinks to himself that only one person. He looks at all those soldiers who have surrounded him, raising their swords and clearly glaring at him fiercely. He shouts as he picks up his sword and thinks that there shouldn't be too many of them. He thinks to himself that he needs to stab at least one. After that, he runs with his friends directly at the enemies, thinking that this is so. He drops his sword on the ground, then thinks that at least it will be closer to home. He grits his teeth and says what the hell. Sinking down under the weight of his weapon, he watches as many soldiers charge at him as he stands crouched on the ground. After that, it is cut into small pieces, surrounded by enemies. And a huge amount of blood splashes everywhere. He breathes heavily as the open water drips from his mouth. Then he closes his eyes. 33 Stimulation Reboot You're here breathing with while the blood is draining all over your mouth. And then he comes to, looking at the floor, he notices that he's still standing on the ground. He turns around, brandishing his weapon, shouting about that fucking trash. And he wonders if they really want to die. After that, he strikes one of the soldiers from above, cutting it open. And the blood of this soldier begins to pay in all directions. And then immediately killing one of them. Li Yuxin runs forward, changing his stance and holding his weapon forward. While the knight sees, it doesn't understand what's going on. Li Yuxin sticks his sword into two opponents, putting them on the floor, with your own weapons. After that, we give up, runs forward, killing these two opponents, and taking their weapons while they bleed to death. Li Yuxin, who has changed his stance, thinks to himself with gritted teeth that he has killed three people, thinking to myself that, this time killing three people, all wounded. Several swords are stuck in him and he bleeds out, after which he falls to the ground, thinking that he killed them. Restart the system, Li Yuxin strikes with his weapon. After that, a lot of blood is sprayed. After cutting one of the opponent's legs, it flies off. After which, Li Yuxin stands there, gritting his teeth and lowering his sword, covered in blood. He looks at the opponent that he just killed and thinks to himself that killing a human. He watches as the soldier screams in pain, looking at how he took his leg off. After that, Li Yuxin makes another swing, hitting the opponent's body, spraying blood everywhere. The blood remains on the sword that he raised up, and Li Yuxin thinks that he is definitely used to it. He swings his sword. Thus, it removes the blood that got on it, thinking that the wheel of the sword. After that, he hits one of the opponents who tried to attack him, cut in half. He is thrown off by the force of the impact and the helmet falls off his head. While he's bleeding out, Li Yuxin thinks about that and the feeling that just cuts through enemies. Li Yuxin takes a deep breath, then stands over the huge number of dead opponents, thinking about how many people he had killed this time. I think to myself that he killed five or six people. He looks at the fact that all his armor is battered, and the fact that during the round his strength and stamina increases. Li Yuxin then thinks to himself that fortunately, these stats don't reset after every session. He looks away and thinks that this is, of course, a good thing, but... Why doesn't he feel happy? Maria calls out to him calling him general. All battered, he looks at her and thinks to himself that it must be because of her, looking at all the bloody battered Maria. She heads straight for him, talking about what she is. After that, she begins to fall, and behind her back there are many arrows that manage to stab her. She falls to the floor and before them thinks to herself that regardless of the outcome, he is sure that the ending is constantly repeated. He stands there in shock and looks at the way Mary's back is full of arrows. He thinks to himself, why is he? He watches Maria cry as she dies, bleeding to death. Li Yuxin turns around, gritting her teeth and says that, as expected, she took away the illusion created in this shoddy place. He thinks to himself, why does it bother him so much? 65 Simulation Reboot A bearded soldier bleeds as he falls to the ground. There are many corpses everywhere, with spears stuck in them. And Li Yuxin, thinking to himself, what, counting this? He nine. Then Li Yuxin stabs his weapon directly into the opponent's body, piercing it. He thinks to himself that he is 10. After which, Li Yuxin looks ahead coolly and thinks that all this time, he thought that he was lucky to be able to kill several opponents with his amateur moves. 
he looks up and notices a lot of soldiers continuing to attack him running forward using spears and swords. Looking at all this, he thinks that, but then grabs his cloak. The motif of the knight is what he covers himself with a cloak, lifting it up. And many spears pierce this cloak, and then blood comes out. They stop to see what has happened and notice the emblem on this cloak. After which, Li Yushin looks on as they stab their own ally with swords and spears, bleeding profusely. He smiles and runs away from them, holding his blade, which is covered in blood, thinking to myself that now I don't. So far, all the soldiers were very surprised to see Li Yushin alive, turning to the side. He cuts them open as they try to get their weapons out of the corpse. He thinks to himself, says that he is. One of the soldiers still pulls out a spear from this corpse, very angry. He grabs it and tries to hit Li Yushino with it. Li Yushin notices this and tries to dodge the punch. He can do it, and he looks at the spear very close to his face. He grabs the edge of the spear with his hand. Then, straining very hard, he snatches it out, holding it forward and bending down, gritting his teeth. Together with this spear, he throws over himself and the soldier holding on to it and he falls to the ground with him, while Li Yushin gets tired again. Just as Li Yushin is trying to get up from behind, another knight comes up with a sword. He runs at it with all his strength, and Li Yushin notices it by turning around. He manages to turn around and hits back, cutting off his leg. The lawyers go into shock, losing their balance and falling, but still holding their weapons. Li Yushin spots Three's opponent, who also runs at him with his blade while he cut off Two's leg, and he manages to stab three soldiers with his weapon right in the chest while he screams in pain, bleeding profusely, and Li Yushin takes out his sword from that soldier. It's dripping blood. He's panting, bloodied, and watching as one of the soldiers he cut off his leg tries to run away. Climbs screaming. He picks up his weapon and raises it up. He thinks to himself that he is accurate, after which he plunges his weapon into the opponent's back. He thinks to himself that he is getting stronger, and a lot of the soldiers who attacked him are standing there in shock and don't understand what is happening. Li Yushin is breathing heavily and his hands are shaking as he holds onto his sword. He's bleeding all over and very battered. Think to yourself that even though it looks like a sieve, then he spits blood. He will lose the blood that you spat out from his mouth with one of your hands, thinking to yourself that he is not dead yet. Breathing heavily, he looks back and sees a lot of soldiers behind him, thinking that when this is all that's left, the only thing to stand up for. Noticing this, he continues to lean on his weapon, breathing heavily and noticing how everyone is surrounding him. He looks at the huge number of corpses lying on the floor, and I think to myself what happened to those old men who like to yell. He tries to find it among the many corpses, looking at how they lie, and mostly they were opponents. Thinking to myself, what's up with that hanging red-nosed knight? Li Yushin thinks about how they all died or betrayed him by running away. After which, he gritted his teeth, thinking to himself that even so, he starts saying that it doesn't matter anymore from the very beginning of this battle. He calms down and looks ahead, wondering what it was like to be back home. He says that it was his own battle. Then one of the enemy soldiers comes forward with an axe and a head that had long hair. Li Yushin notices this, and he looks at him. It was a larger enemy soldier who was standing there, smiling, looking at Li Yushin. He raises a hand with his head and throws it right at him. Li Yushin sees the head flying towards him. He tries to see whose it is, and then he stands there with his sword in his hand and watches as the chapter falls to the floor. She makes fun of him directly, and he notices her face. He stares, furious, while the soldiers smile as they watch the show. He looks at Maria's severed head. He begins to give birth, hold on to his blade, and says that he thought he was alone. Then he looks at that dead head and thinks to himself that it was still there. Also, he lowers his head and grits his teeth, breathing heavily. He tells her what she was thinking. After that, many enemy soldiers, taking spears in their hands and pointing them at Lai Yushino, run straight to him. And they pierce it, and then a lot of blood is scattered everywhere. 97 Simulation Reboot Li Yushin asks Maria Po and turns around, why is she smiling like that? Of the wounded, Li Yushin, who is covered in blood, stands next to Maria, surrounded by many enemies, and tells her what made her so happy this time. Maria turns to him and asks in surprise, when is it this time? She takes out a spear from her chest, after which a lot of blood comes out of her body. Li Yushin watches Maria bleed to death while spitting at her. He turns back to her, tells her that right before he dies, just like now. He lowers his gun and tells her that she always smiles right before she dies. He yells at her because he knows why she's doing it. He keeps yelling, saying why, why didn't she just run away instead of protecting him? He asks her to answer, then thinks to himself that she is nothing more than an illusion pretending to be his ally. And he thinks to himself, does she really want him to worry about her? He is very angry and continues to yell at her, wondering if she will treat him differently just because he is dying for her. Maria was very surprised by his words, talking about the general that he was. He keeps yelling at Maria, lowering his gun and relaxing, as she runs towards him, telling him what the hell he's looking at and he's talking to her. He notices her grabbing the shield. 
After that, she protects Li Yuxin's head by covering it with a shield and bringing it closer. And he looks at her while she holds the shield over her head. She hugs him, and a lot of arrows hit this shield, protecting Li Yuxin. He notices this while looking at the huge hail of arrows that is flying towards them. The two of them are hugging each other under the shield, and a lot of arrows miss, hitting the ground next to them. He gritted his teeth telling her what kind of nonsense she was going to answer or not. Bakata breathes heavily as she hugs Li Yuxin. She continues to hold the shield until Li Yuxin's rinse hits the arrows and the shield protects them. There were a huge number of corpses on the wall, and Li Yuxin thought about how, trapped in this nightmarish cycle of endless deaths, he realized that he didn't have any allies in this damn place. Li Yuxin carefully examined the knights surrounding him. He thought that he shouldn't trust anyone, but... The girl leaped, and with a single swing of her sword, she cut the knight in half. She turned around on the rock in her teeth, defending herself from the other knight. Looking at her, Li Yuxin wondered what this girl was, she was different. The girl attacked the knight and slashed his body with quick movements. Li Yuxin kept thinking about how she moved differently in each cycle, as if she didn't belong in this world. The girl, having finished off the last knight who attacked her, fell to her knees. Li Yuxin wondered why it was only her. The girl turned to Li Yuxin and called out to him with a puzzled expression. She stared into his eyes in silence. And then the girl's hair flashed past Li Yuxin. She fell face down on the ground, tears streaming from her eyes, she said. General. Li Yuxin looked at her with a puzzled frown and wondered what else she was going to say. Li Yuxin, looking at the girl, kept thinking that no matter how many times he yelled at her or asked her, he still didn't get any response. Li Yuxin looked at the girl carefully, then wondered what it meant that he had no choice but to change his tactics. A hail of arrows whistled down from above. Li Yuxin calmly stood on the spot and looked at the girl who was kneeling on the ground as the arrows approached them, and then blood spurted out. Number 137 Reboot Simulation was occurring. The old man glared at Li Yuxin and shouted that the enemy troops had reached the plains. But Li Yuxin didn't say anything, he just stared ahead, then wondered if he didn't care about them cowardly bastards. The warriors, along with the red-haired guy, were looking at Li Yuxin. Li Yuxin was frowning menacingly at the front. He passed a horde of squads lined up, and then realized that he didn't care about those scum. He glanced at the girl standing in front of him with a puzzled expression and wondered if she was the only person he cared about right now. Li Yuxin walked up to the girl and locked eyes with her. Li Yuxin looked into her eyes with confidence. The girl looked back at him in confusion, and Li Yuxin wondered if it was a girl. Suddenly, Li Yuxin shouted loudly for everyone to listen. During the enemy's attack, he would be on the front line. The old man looked at Li Yuxin in fright and shouted general. The red-haired fighter indignantly asked what Li Yuxin was talking about. A girl with a furrowed brow walked up to Li Yuxin who seemed to be the same. Li Yuxin frowned at the girl and said, no buts. The girl remained silent, looking thoughtfully at Li Yuxin. Li Yuxin took out his sword and shouted that he would be at the forefront no matter what, and then wondered what the girl was worried about right now. The girl looked at Li Yuxin with admiration. Li Yuxin raised his sword and turned towards the front line, shouting menacingly, go, and then thought that now he can also fight, moreover, he is able to fight without recovering until the very end. The old man glared at his warriors and shouted for everyone to follow the general, soldiers, prepare for battle. The soldiers, holding their shields forward, went to the front line. The enemy knights shouted menacingly as they charged the fortress. Special fighters, mounted on ladders, walked among the squads. One of them grabbed his sword in his right hand and held a rope attached to the ladder in his left, then ran down the stairs. He ran up the stairs at high speed, rushing forward. And then the enemy soldiers jumped from the stairs to the fortress, holding the ropes behind them. But suddenly, mountains of rocks rained down on them, breaking the ladders and killing the warriors themselves. One of the enemy soldiers still managed to climb the wall, and then he jumped and deftly killed a soldier defending the fortress. The enemy soldiers shouted, grabbed their spears and swords, and ran towards the fortress. Li Yuxin glared at them and shouted that he would definitely stop those bastards this time. Li Yuxin's soldiers were standing behind him, puzzled. Li Yuxin looked away with a frown and wondered what then. At the side, a girl with her sword stood looking at her, and Li Yuxin wondered if he would hear what she had to say. Li Yuxin broke into the fight with his teeth bared. All he could think about was finding out the girl's true identity so that he could finally change the course of events. He cut down the enemy knight with a huge swing. He thought that he would definitely get out of this hell alive. The allied warriors stared ahead, puzzled. At this moment, the girl was forcefully pushing off from the ground. Li Yuxin slashed at the enemy warriors one by one in anger, blood flying everywhere. With a huge swing of her sword, the girl slashed open the knight who was trying to attack Li Yuxin. Li Yuxin turned around and looked at the girl, he thought for a moment to find out who she was. The girl, looking at Li Yuxin in a puzzled way in response, I don't understand why he looks at her so hard, Li Yuxin thought that he would survive. The allied knight ran headlong, attacking the enemy with a swinging sword. 
but the enemy knight was stronger and split the knight in two while smiling in his face. Li Yuxin wondered if the weaklings who called him their general had either died. The soldiers were puzzled and frightened as they looked at their attacking comrades, and then throwing down their swords and shields and running away. Li Yuxin wondered if they had either escaped from the battlefield. Li Yuxin made a strong swing of the sword around him, blood spurted out, and wondered what the hell was going on. Suddenly, Li Yuxin noticed something off to the side while killing the enemy warriors. The girl killed one by one, but a big man with a huge axe suddenly swung at her. He swung at the girl with a smile, and she looked helplessly at the rapidly approaching death. Li Yuxin threw down his sword, which was flying at a high speed, and bits of blood were falling from it. The sword struck the big man in the heart with great force, and he dropped the axe in horror and began to fall down dead. Li Yuxin gracefully held his hand in the air, worried for the girl. He frowned, breathing heavily, holding his hand in the air. He thought that this moment, the girl stood silently in front of Li Yuxin, and behind her, a big man with a sword stuck in his heart fell with a crash. The girl stooped weakly to the ground and spat out blood. A huge number of enemy soldiers surrounded them, holding their weapons at the ready but not taking any action. Li Yuxin wondered that when they were the last ones left who could still stand in this cycle of madness. Li Yuxin calmly looked at the girl who was kneeling on one knee among the countless enemy warriors, leaning on her sword with difficulty. Looking at her, he raised his left hand and wondered what would happen soon and then he raised his right hand. Li Yuxin hovered over the girl with his arms outstretched. The girl looked indignantly at Li Yuxin, then shouted, General, what are you doing? Li Yuxin stood silently, not answering. Something seemed to happen from above, and he thought that the arrows would fall on them like rain. Li Yuxin sternly looked at the girl, tears welling up in his eyes. He said that she always died first, so he couldn't hear her, her last words. However, the first arrow fell, and it pierced through Li Yuxin's arm. The girl looked at Li Yuxin in fear, unable to do anything about it. Li Yuxin clenched his teeth in pain. Li Yuxin looked at the girl with a crazy face and then shouted that this time it would be different, whether she knew why, but because he wouldn't let her die before him. Li Yuxin kept shouting with his mouth wide open that now let her say what she tried to say before she died. Who she was, let her tell him who she really was. Arrows whizzed toward the ground. The sudden girl leaped forward, blood streaming from her knee. She quickly approached Li Yuxin with her hand outstretched and then suddenly grabbed him by the scruff of the neck. Li Yuxin gave her a puzzled look and shouted out in fright. The arrows were fast approaching them, and the girl tilted Li Yuxin's body towards her, and then hugging him called out now. Li Yuxin looked at the girl's hand in embarrassment and couldn't do anything. She started to bully him, covering him with her body, and Li Yuxin stood there with his arms outstretched, looking puzzled. And then suddenly, with a furrowed brow, he shouted loudly what she was doing. He pressed down hard on her shoulder, trying to pull her down. But the girl gained more and jumping they began to fall to the ground. Li Yuxin looked away in fright. The girl clenched her teeth and hugged Li Yuxin. The arrows were rapidly closing in on them. They began to fall at the girl's very heels. And then they pierced her body and the ground not far from them. A girl with arrows stuck in her back was lying on top of Li Yuxin. He lifted her limp body and glared at her face. She tasks on looked at her and then asked what she was trying to do. The girl calmly looked at Li Yuxin while holding on to him and then replied that she was. Her face was covered with scars, she was losing consciousness, covering her eyes, she replied that even so. Li Yuxin looked at her carefully, then wondered if he couldn't hear them again. His brow furrowed, and then he looked at the girl and wondered if he could guess what she was trying to say. The girl in Li Yuxin's arms closed her eyes, then he thought that she was just trying to protect him. Li Yuxin gritted his teeth and asked her what she meant by protection, even if it ended up like this every time. The girl's dead body was lying in Li Yuxin's arms, he told her that why just why, she was trying so hard to protect him. He glared at the girl, then added that he didn't even know her name. He sat beside the girl's dead body, stroking her head, and wondered what was denying everything and denying it. He recalled how in his previous life, she had died with tears in her eyes, and then he thought, before he even realized it, this girl might have become the only person he considered his ally in this place. Nothing matters now. Suddenly, an old man ran up to Li Yuxin and shouted that the enemy troops had reached the plains. The red-haired guy looked at Li Yuxin with a puzzled expression. The knights of Li Yuxin looked at him indignantly. Li Yuxin came close to the puzzled girl, and then looked at her and wondered what he was only interested in. He frowned and calmly said that he wouldn't ask her who she was anymore, instead just once. The girl looked at Li Yuxin calmly. Then Li Yuxin looked at her seriously and asked her what her name was. The girl blushed in fright, not knowing what to say. Li Yuxin, looking at her, smiled and wondered if he had somehow embarrassed her. Li Yuxin glared at the girl, then said that he didn't need anything else, so she could at least tell him that. The girl, looking at the floor, remained silent. Li Yuxin looked at her with a smile and thought that he didn't know why, but it was the first time he had smiled since coming to this damn place. Suddenly, the girl, looking at the floor, quietly began to say her name. 
Li Yuxin stared intently, listening intently to her. The girl was disappointed and said that she didn't have one. These words startled Li Yuxin, who opened his eyes wide and then shouted what? He shouted menacingly, looking at the girl that she didn't have a name. What nonsense, the guy with red hair said something disappointed. Li Yuxin furrowed his brows and turned around furiously. And then he shouted menacingly and asked if he didn't like something. The red-haired guy unfriendly replied that Li Yuxin wanted to say that he didn't know if the general had forgotten the knights. As the three kings with red hair began to emit light, he held out his hand and replied that she was an elite soldier of the Lai family, who was trained to accomplish a great goal, in other words, just a tool for war, no more, no less. Nearby, the knights watched their conversation in silence. The knight with red hair looked at the girl and continued to say, it's not strange that she doesn't have a name, is it? He furrowed his brows, then turned to Li Yuxin and added that there was no need to worry about such small things. Li Yuxin gritted his teeth and threatened to tell the guy to shut up. The girl and the guy shied away from this answer, they were in a stupor. Li Yuxin, glaring at the guy, said that she was his knight, who was he to treat her like a thing? The old man and the guy were shocked by this. The soldiers froze in horror. Li Yuxin looked back at the girl and thought that even when everyone else had betrayed him and run away, she had fought by his side until the very end that maybe she was just a line of code programmed to do so. Li Yuxin frowned as he turned to the girl and carefully watched her, then wondered what her expression was. The girl looked at Li Yuxin sadly. Li Yuxin continued to say while looking at her that she was definitely different, not like all those freaks. Then Li Yuxin asked her why she was different. The girl frowned and said nothing. And then suddenly looking at Li Yuxin, she shouted that she wasn't that different, she was just one of the general's soldiers, she was just like everyone else. Li Yuxin smiled and then wondered what this answer was again. Just as he expected, the old man glared at Li Yuxin, then shouted, General, the enemy troops have reached the plains. Li Yuxin threateningly drew his sword from its scabbard and pondered what would happen from now on. The enemy knights, already unsheathed their swords, were climbing the stairs to the fortress gates. Li Yuxin lowered his sword and looked at everything that was happening, thinking that he would have to plunge into these endless deaths again. Li Yuxin's knights faced off against the enemy in a bloody duel. The enemy knights easily slaughtered Li Yuxin's terrified knights. Suddenly there was a blue aura around nowhere he wondered what it was, his heart it beats harder. Only let them tell me that it's all because of fear, but no this time it's different. A blue energy began to spread through Li Yuxin's body, and he wondered what was causing this excitement. Li Yuxin furrowed his brows as he looked ahead and wondered what energy was bubbling up deep inside of him. He gritted his teeth and thought about how it felt like it was about to explode. Li Yuxin's eyes filled up and he wondered if it was the anger that he had accumulated during his entire reincarnation. No, it wasn't like there was some unknown force that was rippling inside, and his entire body was burning and itching. Li Yuxin's knights were running away from their enemies in fear, unable to do anything against them. Li Yuxin shouted fiercely with his mouth wide open to tell them not to retreat. If they had the strength to run away, then they would be enough to kill another enemy. Blue energy surged through Li Yuxin's entire body. The warriors of Li Yuxin looked at him with puzzled expressions, and the red-haired knight looked in his direction in fear. Suddenly, the old man stretched out his hand and shouted loudly that they didn't hear the general, let them stop them from fighting, putting their lives on the line. The knights enthusiastically rushed into the battle with shouts, and Li Yuxin took a deep breath and shouted, And you. He looked at the puzzled girl and told her to listen carefully, this order only applies to her. The girl instantly dropped to one knee and listened intently. Li Yuxin was surrounded by a blue strong energy and continued to say that from now on, she didn't dare die before him. Hearing this, the girl was shocked, but didn't know what to say. Li Yuxin glared at her and said that if she disobeyed this order. Li Yuxin, looking at the girl, continued to say that he would finish her off himself. The girl's eyes reflected Li Yuxin, who was filled with energy. Li Yuxin turned around and started walking away from her, telling himself in his mind that he was asking her to stay alive until the end. The girl raised her bloodstained sword and carefully examined Li Yuxin. Li Yuxin, surrounded by a strong aura, stepped forward to push his warriors apart and ordered them to move aside, he would lead. The knights looked at their general in dismay. Li Yuxin swung his sword and thought that for some reason right now, he felt like he could do anything. It didn't matter if it was a million enemies or ten million. Li Yuxin furiously shouted for them to go forward. System message start of battle point six. Computer scientists were closely monitoring the development of the battle. The number zero appeared on the timer. The enemy knights rushed towards Li Yuxin at a run, and an incredibly strong blue aura began to flow from him. The scientists looking at this opened their mouths and continued to stare in shock. Suddenly, he yawned and rubbed his eye, saying that he almost forgot. He gradually began to get up from the table. His companions were already discussing something and laughing as they sipped their coffee. Someone removed their glasses and asked if the simulator was still running. And then the man put them over his eyes and looked at the screen and said that it didn't matter how stable the subject was, they should have gone completely mad by now. 
Suddenly, he was startled by what he saw. He called out to the CEO in a trembling voice, and then he turned to his comrades and shouted menacingly for them to call the general manager here at once. The enemy soldiers looked ahead in fear. Li Yuxin violently smashed them down one by one without giving them a chance. He gave them a menacing, intimidating look. Then he swung his sword and quickly walked towards them. Li Hai and Jiayu stared at the monitor in fright, then asked what else it was. The scientists stared back in fright, not sure what to say, while Li Yuxin tore the opponents to shreds. Li Yuxin clenched his teeth and then attacked fiercely. Looking at this process, Li Hai and Jiayu became very angry, gritting his teeth. Then he shouted what the hell was that? The girl destroyed the enemies one by one. She advanced at great speed, chopping off the head of the enemy. Li Hai and Jiayu looked at the monitors with a puzzled expression then asked who she was. He looked at the monitor in fright, and then shouted that who even added a female knight to the simulator. Looking at the girl mercilessly destroying enemies, I was startled to think that an NPC that they didn't even create was caught in the simulator. He stared nervously at the monitor, and then, with a trembling voice, told the scientists not to tell him what. This girl is a bug. Li Hai and Jiayu began to remember all the deaths that Li Yuxin had experienced, and he thought that in order to maximize the disintegration of the personality, each death and reset allows you to feel all the pain and colors. Li Hai and Jiayu recalled how Li Yuxin collapsed on the ground, bleeding profusely. And then, as he stared impotently into the distance, he reflected that even though this real hell was fraught with considerable risks, they always managed to get everything they could out of it. But Li Yuxin cuts down the enemies one by one. Li Yuxin was filled with a blue aura that if there was someone who could overcome this cycle of endless deaths, then as compensation for all the death's suffering, the result would be an absurdly strong monster. Li Hai and Kaiyu thought hard, folding his hands about the fact that, however, to make this happen, in the near-perfect simulator developed by him, it's impossible for an ignorant high school student to simply not be able to overcome it on their own. Li Yuxin was lying in a capsule from which he had no access to the outside. Li Hai and Jiayu turned around in fright and wondered if that was the case. At that moment, an axe-wielding warrior pounced on Li Yuxin from behind. But Li Yuxin didn't take any action. Someone stabbed the warrior before Li Yuxin was dead. It was a girl who fiercely rushed to Li Yuxin's defense. Li Yuxin turned around and smiled as he looked at her and Li Hai and Jiayu wondered as he looked at them if this means that this tank has some positive effect on this guy's psyche. Li Hai and Jiayu, looking at the scientists furiously shouted to immediately separate them, and then completely erase everything about this and if there is a blockage that cannot be removed, just let them overload and melt his brain. The scientists immediately rushed to their computers and shouted yes in unison. They started programming hard while sitting behind them. The system code appeared on the monitors. All of a sudden, Li Yuxin felt something, and he was very scared and wondered what it was. The enemy knights were running furiously at him, and he thought that he could see everything that was happening on the battlefield. There were countless of them, and Li Yuxin kept thinking that everything in front of him was moving in slow motion, and so were those who were far away. Among the knights, there was an archer who aimed directly at Li Yuxin. Suddenly, this archer released the bowstring and fired a shot. The arrow was moving towards him at high speed. Li Yuxin thought in a bubble that he could see even that. The arrow was fast approaching. Li Yuxin dodged it in a puzzled manner and wondered what he was seeing very clearly. This arrow was cut down with great force by the girl with her big sword. She did this while standing behind Li Yuxin, who calmly returned from her side. Li Yuxin turned around and wondered what was more. He listened and felt something. Li Yuxin thought that just by the sound of her breathing, he could sense that the nameless girl was behind him. The girl barely raised her greatsword to fight again, and Li Yuxin wondered if she was still following a special order perfectly. Li Yuxin was standing still, surrounded by a small blue energy, and enemy knights armed with spears and swords were closing in on him. He glared at them. A large enemy knight armed with two spears shouted furiously, and ran towards Li Yuxin. Li Yuxin abruptly jumped back, dodging the two huge spears that the enemy was armed with. The opponent lunged and pointed two spears at Li Yuxin. Then, Li Yuxin slashed the spears at high speed and destroyed the enemy. The knights of Li Yuxin looked on dumbfounded, no one believed that such a thing was possible. But the enemy knight with two spears attacked Li Yuxin again. Li Yuxin used his power to deflect the blow. Then, with great force, he pushed the knight. The knight fell to the ground with a crash, screaming in pain. He looked ahead, startled. Li Yuxin loomed over him, glaring at him. And then Li Yuxin grabbed his sword filled with blue energy and slashed down. He jumped on the chimney of the terrified enemy soldiers and wondered what to do from now on. He fiercely struck out in front of him, his entire body was permeated with a blue aura. He pondered that he was ready to face anything. He would return home no matter what. Li Yuxin grabs the spear with his hands, lifting it up. 
he has the strength to lift it together with the soldier who is holding the spear. Then he throws it to the opposite side along with the soldier who hits his head on the floor. After which Nikita takes his weapon and stabs this soldier so he jumps into the sky. At the multitude of soldiers with their weapons, Jin the blue light was thinking to herself that from now on, he is ready to face anything. Li Yushin then strikes at a large number of soldiers in the air. They are shocked by the blinding light that Li Yushin created. Some of them fall to the ground, gritting their teeth. After which, they look up and see Li Yushin flying at him with a gun. And Li Yushin lands a punch on one of the fallen knights. After which, a lot of blood splashes everywhere. After killing this knight, he runs forward at the other soldiers surrounding him, continuing to deliver blow after blow. He cuts through all the soldiers in the way, cutting off their torsos and heads, while several other enemies stand in shock. Looking at this, they were clearly scared. Together with Masha, they are surrounded by enemies. They attack them, cutting up many of them until they are shocked. They try to pierce them with spears. The car is wearing a strong bump along with Li Yushin. The shocked soldiers continue to die at their hands, and trying to get away from them somehow. While landing on the ground, Li Yushin repels many enemies. Some of them are already badly injured and bleeding profusely. Lying on the floor and watching Li Yushin cut up their allies, one of the soldiers tries to raise his hand, covered in blood. After that, Li Yushin finishes him off and cleans the blood from his weapon, stepping forward behind the hand that was trying to get up somehow. He turns around and looks at the floor to this soldier. He looks at him like he's trying to do something, crying and screaming in pain. And he strikes at it, cutting it open. Li Yushin and Maria faced each other's backs as they looked at their enemies, thinking to themselves that once again, they were the only ones who could stand. Who looks at Masha and what she is hard and looking for. He jumps into the abyss of enemies, thinking to himself how many he has already killed. While they aim their weapons up to hit him, then he thinks, dozens no, rather hundreds. Li Yushin wonders why his enemies are still running at him. It is thinking about instead of the expected decrease. After that, many office workers work at the computer, typing something quickly on the keyboard. The director is standing behind them, gritting his teeth, clearly showing his displeasure. While they are diligently typing something and are very worried, Director Awkward starts to smile. After which, Li Yushin won his weapon, thinking to himself that there are more and more of them. And then Maria is behind him, telling him the general, can he still fight? And Li Yushin is surprised by this. His back is against it, and he thinks to himself that it's warm. Standing close with Masha, surrounded by enemies and pointing his weapons at them, he thinks about what he knows is counterintuitive, but to feel an inexplicable warmth in the places where our cold armor touches. After which Li Yushin held his gun, saying that even if not, he should. He raises his weapon to his face and smiles, thinking to himself that this is the place where he won't even live a second if he doesn't fight. Li Yushin looks at Masha as she looks at him and tells him about the battle of the heavy burden of the general. After that, she looks at the enemies and thinks that every person, no matter how peaceful their life is, has their own battlefield hidden in their heart. Li Yushin and after her words had a puzzled look, thinking to herself that Soi has its own battlefield. He remembers school time, how he was late for class, running to school, or how to take a test. He solved the problem, trying to remember the solution, or how hard he tried to beat a computer game while playing with a friend at a computer club. After that, Maria goes on to say that it's very easy to lose there, because they can just give up. Li Yushin looks at her in surprise and thinks to himself about giving up. After that, a lot of enemies run up to them while they are pointing their weapons at them, and Maria goes on to say that this is such a simple solution. But that's when it all comes to an end. They look at the wall and how many enemy soldiers are gathering on the stairs on this wall that surrounds it. Maria says that, however, if they do not retreat and fight to the last end, then the battlefield inside her will be with them until their very last breath. After which, the soldiers are already attacking them, and Li Yushin is seriously concentrating, thinking to himself that this is it, as he now understands why, despite the countless deaths he has endured, he can still stand on his feet under. He looks at Masha with one eye and thinks to himself that besides, she is always behind him. Then Li Yushin says, and why is she always protecting him by looking at Masha? He thinks to himself that he didn't get an answer this time as usual, but he wants to ask anyway. He continues to stare at her while she is in the back and tells her that he needs to know so that he asks her to answer. Maria pays attention to him, and he continues to think to himself, what, why, so what is it because for him it has become the very battleground that he cannot refuse. After which, Maria looks at Li Yushin. Li Yushin looks at Masha Picata standing behind him. He tells her why she keeps protecting him by looking directly at her. He thinks to himself that he didn't get an answer this time as usual, but he wants to ask anyway. He turns around with his eyes and talks about what he needs to know so that he asks her to answer. He thinks to himself, why is that? 
After that, Maria pays attention to him and thinks that, well, this is because for him it has become the very battlefield that he cannot refuse. Maria continues to stare at him. No, he notices, thinking to himself that, hell, he doesn't even have to turn his head to follow her gaze and understand. Li Yushin starts to shine with a blue color and thinks to himself that his senses are so sharpened that he can sense her coming. The only thing that they never managed to get through was a shower of arrows. He notices a lot of arrows in the sky, which fly directly at them and turn to Masha. He tells her, thinking to himself that so is she. She still hadn't answered him, had she? He keeps looking at the marching lights. Talk about whether that means she's giving up. Out of blood turns to Li Yushin. After that, a lot of soldiers try to attack them while they are standing and defending themselves. The arrows fly closer and closer. Maria lowers her head, after which she drops her weapon to the floor. She walks towards Li Yushin, and Li Yushin thinks to himself that at this moment, her footsteps were different from all the ones he had seen before. She stands right in front of him as the arrows get closer and closer, and Li Yushin thinks that there was no trace of sadness or uncertainty in them. He looks at her in surprise and tells her that there was no hurry for her. Li Yushin covers himself with his hand to avoid the arrows. He thinks to himself that it's as if those footsteps were there. After which, Maria hugs Li Yushin, who is very surprised by it, thinking to himself that it's only for his sake. Li Yushin spreads his arms, while Maria hugs him, there are many soldiers who are trying to attack him. While those surrounded by corpses, and the arrows are getting closer and closer, coming straight at them. After that, Daniel, standing in shock, not understanding what is happening, Maria, who hugged him, tells her to surrender in front of the general. She lowers her head, covers her eyes, and says it's impossible. Then it goes into shock. She spits blood, trying to tell him that he, like the general, will never, ever give up. After which, Maria hugs Li Yushin tighter and tighter. Arrows slam into their backs, continuing to fly towards them. And Li Yushin thinks to himself that after going through this endless cycle of deaths, he thought that he was already used to this battle with death, looking up at the sky as arrows flew towards them. He looks at Masha and the fact that her back is already full of arrows. I am very worried and think to myself that, but there is one thing that I could not get used to. He looks at her and doesn't shout what she's doing, and she has to take her hands off now. After that, he cuts the arrows that were stuck in her back as they fly towards them. He keeps yelling at her while hugging him, which he said, hey, don't you dare die before him. After that, Maria, when she is dying, says that this is the right thing to do or do it as it should be. He grabs her with one hand, holding her close, and with the other hand tries to defend himself from the arrows, fighting back, shouting that enough is enough. Many arrows miss and hit the ground. After that, Li Yushin stands with his arms around Masha, also wounded and covered in arrows, while Masha also has a lot of arrows sticking out of her back. He cuts through the arrows sticking out of the mash with his weapon, and she hugs him even tighter, telling him what the general means, too. She lowers her head, somehow holding on to him, and says that she will never give up her life. After which, she lowers her hands from her back to Li Yushin, and he looks ahead in silence. The director, standing at a huge monitor and watching everything that is happening, is very worried. He smiles heavily at this, and Li Yushin grabs Masha's hand, telling her not to die. They were all bloodied, and he shook Masha's hand firmly. He leans into his weapon, bending down and sticking it on the ground, then taking her on his shoulders, lowering himself. He's breathing hard from how hard it was while Maria is lying on his back. He looks at her and tells her to open her eyes, and he knows she's still alive. He keeps yelling at her, saying that she said she wouldn't give up. S.H. Cha falls to the ground while Marsha is hanging from his back covered in arrows, and Li Yushin's weapon is stuck next to them, and he keeps shouting and talking about what she said to hold on to the very end so that their story will last forever. And just as you will never leave him, so he will not leave you. After which, Li Yushin starts crying while clenching his teeth. He turns to Masha in tears and continues to shout that she should open her eyes right now. Maria lies motionless on Li Yushin's back, after which she coughs up blood. Li Yushin notices this and thinks to himself that she is alive. Li Yushin gritted his teeth and looked at Masha with tears in one eye, grabbing her and trying to get up. Then he looks ahead and thinks to himself that he's asking her not to die, if not for herself, then at least for him. He notices the many enemies surrounding them and points his weapon directly at them. They are lined up in a row, and with a serious face, he walks straight towards them. Li Yushin grabs Masha's hand and tells her to move. He gritted his teeth and started to bleed, thinking to himself that despite Tyrant's fatigue, he drops to one knee, thinking to himself that even if the muscles are about to tear, he holds Masha's hand tightly and thinks to himself that he should go. And then Li Yushin starts to shine with a blue light, gritting his teeth, thinking to himself that only there will they be able to survive. He grabs his weapon, after which, Li Yushin starts to burn with a blue aura, thinking to himself that no matter what, he leans on his weapon. A blue aura bursts out of Li Yushin while he is concentrating hard. Everything starts to shake. Li Yushin is breathing heavily while Maria is on his shoulders dying in shock as well. 
He looks at her crying and yelling at her that she should not pass out, and he asks her to be patient a little more. He thinks to himself that he will save her no matter what. After that, many Luhansk soldiers run straight at them. They surrounded Li Yushin and Masha. They pointed their weapons at them. The enemy soldiers are smiling, many of them bloodied, but they are getting closer. Li Yushin is down on one knee, trying to hold Marshal Yi on his shoulders, leaning on his weapon as many soldiers surround them at the castle walls. Daniel looks at these soldiers, thinking to himself that after that, the director looks at the monitors and is very worried and shows a clear dissatisfaction as Li Yushin looks at everything with a serious face. Li Yushin turns around as Marsha starts coughing up blood. He grips his weapon even tighter, thinking to himself that there's no time for distractions. If he wants to survive, he needs to move. He grabs Masha's hand and tries to get up from his knees, gritting his teeth, but blood starts pouring from his mouth. He thinks to himself that, but his strength is already running out, trying to get up, but he can't. Enemy soldiers, taking spears of balls, run at them shouting. And Li Yushin is trying to get up, thinking to himself that you need to move. The enemy soldiers are getting closer and closer. And Li Yushin thinks to himself that even if the flesh is torn, he tries to stand up, holding Masha on his shoulders, thinking that, and the muscles are aching. After that, his eyes turn blue, and everything around him starts to shine. Here begins to give birth, then with a firm grip on his weapon. He tries to stand up but somehow manages to clench his teeth and scream in pain very loudly, thinking to himself that it feels like his whole body is in agony. With burning blue eyes, looking up at the sky and carrying Masha on his shoulders, he thinks to himself that along with this is an indescribable power. It seeds inside him. He thinks to himself that he should stand up, after which the ground around him begins to break under Li Yushin's might. He struggles to get up and tell himself to move on. She's already standing up and starting to scream, and he swings his weapon, and all the soldiers running at them all around. They fly back, many of whom are irritated. He continues to attack, hitting more and more people as they scream in pain and fly away, cutting them in half by jumping from above. He doesn't stop making his punches, cutting more and more. The soldiers, shocked and uncomprehending, die one by one as Li Yushin screams and his eyes turn blue with burning eyes, rushing forward through the pain. There's a lot of blood splattering everywhere. My partial teeth keeps running forward until its wounds open up. Those who are watching everything happening through the monitor in bewilderment begin to shout about where such power came from. One of the people at the computer starts clicking hard on the keyboard, looking at the monitor on which the error is written. He shouts to the director that it is difficult to determine the reason, what the hell is happening at all, which the director does not understand in shock, looking at all this and thinks what is happening. A lot of errors appear on the screen and indicate that assimilation is successful. Then the director remembers that it really looks like a blow from a one-eyed man with an axe, remembering how he had killed a huge number of soldiers attacking him with one swing. After that, Li Yushin continues to run forward, cutting down more and more enemies, pointing his weapon forward and holding the car on his shoulders. He breaks through the battlefield, stopping near a huge number of enemy corpses. While the remnants of the army are not understanding what is happening, hold on to your weapons. They are shocked and very much afraid of Li Yushin, looking at him and trembling in fear. And the Maria on Li Yushin's shoulders somehow tells him that the general, Li Yushin notices that he's turning to look at her. Maria tells him that before it's too late. She looks at him all bruised and says, could they give her a name? Li Yushin looks at her and shouts to her, what was she thinking to herself, what was her name? He sees a lot of frightened soldiers in front of him, but at the same time they are very angry, pointing their weapons directly at them and thinks to himself why now, saying that he will do it later. After that, Maria starts nodding her head that she doesn't. Li Yushin notices this by looking at her with one eye that she shakes her head, and the girl who always followed his commands without question, and Maria tries to tell him what if he doesn't give her a name now. She approaches Li Yushin's face and says that Dana will never forget his name. Li Yushin then lowers his head, he ponders the idea while looking up at the sky, at a beautiful sunset, standing up all wounded as the soldiers approach them. He lowers his head, thinking, and tells her that it's fine, then he will call her, Sepia. He smiles at her and tells her that she will be called Sepia from now on. She smiles as she listens to all this, then looks at Li Yushin with a smile and says that's a good name, General. Sepia, she begins to remember, a field with many spikelets and tells him that it reminds him of a reed field against the background of a scarlet sunset in her hometown. After that, she falls headfirst on the shoulder of the child. He continues to hold it and, lowering his head and his weapon. He grits his teeth and starts screaming really hard. Li Yushin thinks about how he never asks for sepia. He lowers his head, looking at her and thinking that they'll never do it. After which, the many soldiers surrounding them all covered in blood and very surprised by what just happened, shout that this aura has disappeared, and they shout that they need to attack now. After which, they pointed all of their weapons directly at Li Yushin as he held her on his shoulders and left. 
they stick them in them, after which a lot of blood splatters everywhere. The monitor shows a fully filled attack scale and an almost completely filled defense scale. Speaking of which, it's a mistake. Termination of the simulation session 138. The director stands with his teeth clenched, clearly displeased, looking at the monitors standing next to many of his employees who are sitting at the table and doing something at the computers. He worries and thinks to himself that this time he has somehow managed to kill. But looking at Li Yushin's real body, the fact that it is in the capsule and has stopped twitching, he grits his teeth and thinks to himself that he didn't think the damn kid would become so strong. After that, one of the employees sitting in the back shouts to the director, Solo is a very huge surprise, and he turns to him with obvious indignation, asking what is it this time. This employee raises his hand and shouts at him that he seems to have found out how to deal with him and this night girl. Li Yushin thinks about Sepia, remembering her smiling face, and that she said it was a good name, General. He thinks to himself that he couldn't save her. He remembers cutting through a lot of enemies under the blue aura, thinking that even though he was able to use this strange energy, he was still able to use it. But he couldn't break through their formation. He remembers how he fell to his knees, and yet this time he's sure, even if it means cutting the throats of all his enemies, he gets up from his knees. Going back and thinking to myself that this girl, I'm sure when he gets up on his feet, the cloak starts to fly in the wind, and he looks ahead and thinks about Sepia. Reboot 139 Simulation on the wall of one castle, a general is shouting, enemy troops have reached the plains. Li Yushin stands silently with his head down and thinks to himself that he will save her. He opens his eyes and looks ahead with confidence. He screams sepia, looking ahead all bloody, and many of his soldiers in brown uniforms are standing in shock, not understanding what he is going to do now. He looks around in shock and doesn't understand what's going on, and keeps shouting the whole name, thinking to himself that she said she would never forget that name. Soldiers with shields and swords stand at a loss for what their commander is doing. They are shocked to see what is happening, and the red-haired guy doesn't understand what's going on either while Li Yushin thinks about what's why. He tries to find her among his soldiers and the white-haired old man at the head, thinking that he can't find her anywhere. Still looking at it everywhere, among the soldiers, he notices her sword lying on the floor. After that, he becomes aware. He keeps looking for her, turning his head not to mention her name, but to ask her where she is. The soldiers come in shock about not being heard and one of the men with red long hair approaches him, coming forward and talking about it. General, he thinks to himself as he says these words, how embarrassing it is to call him that. He remembers when they were stomping on their horses, and he watched him as he gritted his teeth and lowered himself, saying that the man who inherited the mantle of a greater predecessor was nothing. Looking at Lai Yushin and how much he was afraid and trembling as he held the horse in check, thinking that he was a cowardly brat who only knew how to run away. I think that it's Li Yushin that he knows. He gets perplexed and somewhat shocked looking at it, and thinks about how it is possible that the guy standing in front of him, looking at Li Yushin, who is confidently looking ahead and looking for Sepia, all bloody and worn, and the red-headed man standing in the front, looking at Li Yushin and how strong he is right now, seems to think that he exudes the kind of pressure that only a real general has. Then Li Yushin keeps yelling at them to tell them where the hell Sepia is. This is a man, approaches him with surprise and says general, only God knows where the person he is looking for is. Li Yushin then grabs onto the man with a sharp movement, and the man is shocked by what he sees. A man has arrived, shouts to the captain, drawing his weapon from its scabbard. And while the other soldiers are also confused, they reach for their weapons. They lined up in a row, pointing their weapons at Li Yushin. While he holds the captain by the neck and starts choking him, and the captain can't do anything to him. And Li Yushin turns to the soldiers and asks them what's right, and I know very well that they would rather follow this old man than him. He looks at all the soldiers who have turned on him, whereupon he grits his teeth and tells her he also knows that he thinks he is a stupid and cowardly mutt. After that, the captain is very surprised by this and tells the general that what is he saying. And Li Yushin starts yelling at him, saying that however he is. Looking at the captain who doesn't understand what's going on, Li Yushin lifts the captain even higher by grabbing him by the neck, and the captain starts choking as he tries to tell the general. The red-haired guy was very surprised at what was happening right now, watching and watching it, thinking to himself that this couldn't be happening. Considering the armor, he should weigh more than 100 kilograms, but he was still able to lift it with ease. The captain is being held in limbo, and he is trying to somehow get out. Though thinks it's more than that, the captain of the knights, he is a knight of the order, has a whole squad under his command. And this is not an opponent that a youngster who uses only his own strength can deal with. And Li Yushin, holding him up above his head and yelling at him that he doesn't care what they think of me and only wants to know one thing. Where is Sepia? And then she steps forward among the soldiers. Meanwhile, Li Yushin tells them to tell him where she is. After which, the red-nosed soldiers behind him appear Sepia and the knights standing watching as she abruptly disappears. 
while he wonders if he's really crazy and who the hell she is. Touched guy, pointing his weapon forward, shouts to him that the general he does not understand who they are talking about and first you need to please let the captain go. Watching as Liu Xin continues to hold onto the captain's neck, lifting him into the air. Then Liu Xin starts to smile and turns to the red-haired guy. He smiles mischievously. Touched by the guy, comes the shock of what he saw, thinking to himself, what is the source of such a powerful bloodlust and cannot be? Did he really get scared by this brat? Li Yushin then throws the captain to the floor, thinking that it's okay. And the captain falls over the wall, falling lower and lower, not understanding what is happening. The captain hits the floor, gritting his teeth and taking all the damage. After that, Li Yushin quickly picks up the red-nosed guy until he is shocked to realize how fast it was. Li Yushin grabs him by the neck, and he is taken aback. He lifts it above him and says, looking at it, what can it be then? Then he will answer, since he is a tough guy. The white-haired captain gets up from the floor and shouts to the general, running forward, thinking that this is impossible and how can he move like this? He shouts to him to calm down. It's just that there's not a single person with that name here and the civilians have already evacuated. So, does his captain notice something? He starts coughing up blood, not understanding what's going on. And Li Yushin hit him with his foot, he's holding the red-nosed guy suspended from the sky by his neck at the same time. And at the same time kicks the captain, pushing him away. The inhabitants behind this are puzzled, opening their mouths. The captain who got kicked spit up blood. Li Yushin held the boy's neck in a suspended position with one hand and kicked the captain at the same time, after which he was thrown back. As the soldiers watched, they opened their mouths in surprise. The guy touches it, grits his teeth and tries to get out somehow, but he can't. While Li Yushin looks at how he kicked the captain. After which, the captain flew far ahead, tumbling. After that, Li Yushin starts shouting all over the world that she is not a civilian at all, she is dragging you garbage cannot even be compared. Strangling Red Nose Guy to death, so much so that he started coughing up blood. Li Yushin thinks to himself that his only companion on this is finishing the battlefield, and he notices her sword lying on the floor, shouting that she is a knight among knights. Li Yushin shouts about what he's saying about the owner of this one and a half truck. After that, the captain, crawling up to this weapon, looks at it with surprise. There is blood on his face, and he looks at Li Yushin and says to the general, could it be that they are talking about the number 232? Looking at Li Yushin, who is being followed by many soldiers who are pointing their weapons at him. After which, Li Yushin gets angry when he looks at the captain. A blue color appears in his eyes. The captain begins to tremble in fear as he watches the mission come his way. The captain, looking down, sees the shadows, thinks to himself that this frightening shadow that is approaching him really belongs to the cowardly heir he once knew. After that, Li Yushin stops when he gets to the captain. He watches as Li Yushin unconsciously raises his weapon, thinking that the way he looks reminds him of the supreme commander of the empire. He remembers that his appearance didn't his ancestor look exactly the same. Then Li Yushin reaches out to the captain, who grabs him, lifts him up and pulls him to his side, and shouts at him, saying that her name is Sepia, not number 232, and he had to tell her where she was now. After that, the captain is shocked, trembles all over and tells the general that he only knows that she is in the infirmary. Li Yushin is very surprised by this, thinking to herself that and why she is in the infirmary. He turns to the soldiers behind him and shouts at them to take him there immediately. After that, it rains for the entire length of the wall, and the captain enters one of the turrets while the soldiers, parting, look after him. They continue to follow him as Li Yushin walks forward. Li Yushin opened the door, who pushed it open with all his strength, then together with the other soldiers, he shouts her name. Looking inside the room, he appears in the infirmary and all those who are wounded soldiers are called by them. They look at him in disbelief. Many of them have a lot of bandages on their hands and head. Some of them can't even lie on the bed while the nurses take care of them. And then Li Yushin notices the same girl being courted near the same man. He looks and sees that it was Sepia. Very surprised by this, I realize that it is her, after which he quickly walks towards her. While one of the nurses, turning, asks the general. And Li Yushin walks right up to the bunk. He looks down on this girl as she lies unconscious. He grits his teeth and thinks to himself about what's going on. He watches as she lies wounded in the infirmary. Three nurses approach him, dressed in white robes, and ask the general why he is here and what happened to this man. Nurses with bloodied hands approach this girl and wipe her face, not saying that they apologize to him, but they are also confused. She has been here for 10 days, all this time she is in this state. After which Li Yushin is very surprised by this, saying that 10 days. He brings his hand up to hers and thinks to himself that they've just fought, and she's been lying there for 10 days by the shoulder. After which, Li Yushin starts to smile, thinking to himself, that's for sure. It's a terrible place. And did the director create it? He might very well pull off a similar trick, after which Li Yushin, looking at her with a serious face, says that this person she will wake up someday. 
The two sisters, who are standing there in disbelief, look at Liu Xin and say that it's hard to tell. The nurse in the middle tells the general that she wants him to keep his voice down while he's here. Li Yushin moves closer to the girl's face, talking about whether he'll be able to see her open her eyes again. And will she be able to wake up? Think to yourself that all he can do is watch helplessly as he loses her. Sepia. After that, the nurse is shocked and many of the wounded soldiers lying in the infirmary also do not understand what is happening, opening their mouths in surprise. The soldiers standing at the entrance also don't understand what's going on with their mouths open. Then to Li Yushin, who is standing over her bunk. One of the nurses comes up from behind him and tells him that he can do it. Li Yushin turns around in surprise, and he sees one of the nurses standing up and saying what if it's the Immaculate Mary. While many soldiers lying nearby are looking at this nurse in surprise. And she says with clear confidence that she can cure any disease. One screams that if they bring this girl to her, she will surely be able to save her. Everyone looks at this nurse in surprise and Li Yushin silently turns away, thinking to himself that Immaculate Mary. He turns back to his sister and tells her what he needs to do to meet her. After which, many enemy soldiers place ladders on the walls. They climb them directly on the wall, and then, having climbed up, they attack, killing allied troops. The nurse says there's only one way, should he win this battle. After which, Li Yushin is surprised by her words as he looks at her. The nurse, looking at Li Yushin, says that there is only one way, and he has to win this battle. After which, Li Yushin is taken aback by listening to all this despite the nurse. And while the enemy soldiers continue to attack the wall, killing the allied troops by slashing them, the nurse says that if they can reach the end and meet the Immaculate Mary. Then looking at the sepia of the unconscious man, the nurse says they will definitely save her. After that, a lot of enemy soldiers with bloodied weapons and serious faces are baking on the wall forward and then all those who were in the infirmary hear the sounds of enemy trampling. They are very surprised by this, looking at the gate, standing over a sepia cot. When everyone starts to worry and in their walk back and forth Li Yushin stands and says, what does it mean after all? He looks at her with a serious face, scanning her face, thinking to himself what if he wants to see her again. He has no choice but to win. Then he thinks to himself, that's right, it's pretty simple, he'll save her, and they'll fight together again until the end to get home. After that, the allied soldiers run into the infirmary and the generals shout that all the military headquarters have been destroyed and the enemy will soon arrive. After that, Li Yushin looks at the soldiers with a serious face, says, what does this mean until the last moment? He starts to leave and thinks to himself that she should wait a little longer. He remembers her face and says it's true, but then he turns to look at her one last time and smiles, and that this battle will finally end. Then, as he goes back to her bunk, he thinks to himself that he's never admitted it before. But in fact, during these countless battles, he had thought about giving up many times. After that, many enemy soldiers attack the allied brown army, attacking them by sticking them in your weapon. They are obviously very shy and they scream in pain while they are being killed. Li Yushin sits down on his knee, thinking to himself that, however, he takes her hand and thinks to himself that it's because of her. After that, the enemy soldiers already fall into the infirmary, killing the allied troops by sticking their weapons into it, while they writhed in pain. He's kneeling in front of Sepia. There is an active battle going on, and the allied troops are killing along with all the sick and nurses. At this moment, Li Yushin thinks that he believed that he could overcome all this hell, because when he saw her, it was like he said, I'll always have your back. Then he starts to smile a little as he watches, and he says that's why he was so lonely when she disappeared, that if he really loses her, then these war victims will just wipe her out, and then he puts her hand down, thinking that for now he has a chance. Fight. After that, a lot of enemy troops run at him to attack, taking their weapons and pointing them at him. And Li Yushin starts to light up with a blue aura as he picks up his bloodstained blade. As the enemies jump on him, Li Yushin says that he won't give up until victory is his, thinking that it's all to go home and save her no matter what. Then he turns around and is already in a blue aura, throwing his punches while shouting. He cuts them into many pieces, killing them one by one. Many of them fly off, completely dismembered. They cry out in pain and marvel at the skill with which he kills them. And Li Yushin has a serious face as he fights, thinking that he will fight to the last drop of blood. Then move the soldiers with copies, pointing them at him. And he attacks them with his weapon, running straight at them, thinking that because only he started to warm up. After that, this tower at the gate breaks into two parts. Everything around us begins to collapse into a blue aura. There is a huge explosion, from which a lot of people fly out. These were enemy soldiers who were killed and bleeding they fly out and fall to the ground. Li Yushin with one punch of his own. He was able to kill a lot of people by making a hole in the wall, leaving a huge trail of corpses and holding his blade in front while out of breath. Reinforcements arrive, and many enemy soldiers continue to run at him with their weapons, and he jumps at them in response, continuing to attack and using a very strong attack, raising his weapon up. 
Everything starts to glow blue as the soldiers run towards him. After that, a second explosion occurs, and Li Yushin is flying out with a soldier by chaining him to the wall with your weapon. He tries to attack it with his spear while Li Yushin is flying with it, and they are watched by a lot of passers-by. The allied soldiers, who are clearly being pushed back, watch Li Yushin fight and are surprised by it, stopping. They look at Li Yushin with gritted teeth, jumps forward with killing enemies. Then Li Yushin comes to his senses and starts looking around. He sees how the captain, along with the soldiers, is very much panicking and afraid. He sees them running away with the red-headed man, watching this. Is he looking at them? After that, one of the knights that he picked up with his pinned ball hits him with a spear before he notices. Li Yushin is only thinking about them at this moment. This soldier pierces Li Yushin's chest with a spear, and he starts to fall down. Li Yushin gritted his teeth and was very angry that they were lying freaks. Blood starts dripping from it along with the falling rocks. At the end of 139 simulations, Li Yushin flies surrounded by a blue aura, soaring up into the sky, stabbing one of the soldiers into the rock he is flying with. And he thinks to himself that at some point this thought popped into his head. Meanwhile, many soldiers are watching Li Yushin fly along with the enemy soldier. He thinks to himself that this is a never-ending loop of hell. Li Yushin is smeared all over with blood, gritting his teeth and looking ahead until a sea of blood falls on him. He wonders the same thing when it will end. Then they stick a lot of spears in him, all around red, and he thinks to himself that now that she's not with him, he's going to die again. Naturally, teeth and stand holding his weapon forward until the surrounding soldiers impaled him with their spears. He thinks about it over and over again, without any changes, playing again and again, then lying dead in pools of blood. He thinks about ending up in the middle of a field and suffering. From now on, he will have to fight alone without sepia, and he thinks that it's not even worth hoping for help from them, they don't even think about it. These freaks will just run away, remembering all the allied troops who just ran along the wall, throwing down their weapons and looking in fear, lied. Then Li Yushin thinks about how wait a minute he's looking at them and wondering why the hell they're even trying to escape. When their lives depend on this battle, then he is surprised, and he realizes something here is thinking to himself, which is impossible. After that, the simulation is restarted. It's raining hard, and Li Yushin is looking up at the sky covered in blood. The general is shouted at him. The enemy troops had reached the plains. Then Li Yushin, looking up at the sky, says that the reinforcements are coming, right? After that, the captain with the rest of the troops is very surprised by this and says that they are saying this. Li Yushin looks at them with a serious face and talks about why they are so surprised. And he just asks if reinforcements have arrived. After which, the red-headed guy looks at him with very great surprise. And the captain also doesn't understand what's going on, looks at him, telling him what the general is talking about. And what other reinforcements? Li Yushin thinks to himself that this is expected, after which he smiles and says that this is how it is. They seem to have more troops that he doesn't even know about. After that, all the knights are perplexed by what is happening, and Li Yushin says that it's not just a squad from the whole reinforcement. Li Yushin puts his head down, smiles, and thinks to himself that there's no point in asking anymore. He looks at these soldiers through Prism and thinks about that, but why did they hide this information from him? Li Yushin smiles and gets it. He sighs, then lets out a chuckle. He tells them that means this is what they were up to, and touched by a guy yelling at him, saying what he means. After which, Li Yushin, looking at him, made a serious face, saying that they used the archers to stall for time. And Li Yushin thinks to himself what a direct descendant means, and all this nonsense was just a ploy to push him to the edge of the abyss from the very beginning. After that, the captain shouts to everyone that he asks them to hurry up and give orders, pointing fingers at the soldiers. Li Yushin thinks to himself, is it because of this? After which, he recalls how the captain grabbed Li Yushin while he was crying and shouted at him, saying to the general, how much longer will he just stand there? And while Li Yushin is thinking about what they're doing, the captain puts his face up to it. Osmina gets out of it and shouts about why he doesn't give them any orders in this situation. Li Yushin thinks to himself what to expect from them and is touched by a guy who shouts in surprise that the general isn't his direct descendant of a great family. Then Li Yushin thinks about how they just wanted to sacrifice him while they were waiting for reinforcements. After which, they looked at Li Yushin kneeling on the ground covered in blood, while he stood in shock, they shouted to him to the general surrounding. Li Yushin, who doesn't know what's going on, is in tears while the captain is holding him by the scruff of the neck, thinking that all they needed was a clown dressed up like a general. After which, Li Yushin made a serious face, says that there's no other explanation for all the shit they've done. The soldiers begin to worry, looking at the general, and thinking to themselves that he was surrounded by desperate people from the very beginning, that they only wanted to hand him over to Blackwin. Then the captain confusedly tells the general what it is, and Li Yushin stands there, starting to smile and, despite the captain, says that to the old man. He's the captain, isn't he? And then, looking at the red-faced guy, he says it's Joseph. 
and he is surprised by this, not understanding what is happening. Li Yuxin smiles as he looks at them and tells them that whatever they are, their beliefs and views are different. From now on, all they can do is not be hypocritical. After which, Joseph grits his teeth and becomes very angry, while the soldiers stand in disbelief. He shouts, looking at him, saying that it was necessary, and other than that we had no other choice, are clear to him. And Li Yuxin smiles at them and says that's why they didn't do it, because they believed that there was no other way. After that, he notices a silhouette among the soldiers and thinks to himself that except for just one person. He remembers Sepia standing in the midst of that army. Then Li Yuxin looks at them and thinks to himself, well, if he were in their shoes, maybe he wouldn't be much different either. After which, Li Yuxin says a bit sadly that it was a good plan. But looking at them, he says that, however, they don't know, and that they must win this battle. After which, Li Yuxin, looking at them with complete confidence, says that from now on, they will no longer wait for reinforcements. And many soldiers were very surprised by this, opening their mouths and raising their hands. Joseph stands shocked and says out loud what's why, thinking to himself that how dare he even say this nonsense. Then the captain pulls out his weapon and hits it on the floor, while Li Yuxin stands with his blade. He silently stands clutching his weapon tightly while it rains and tells him what he is. The captain gritted her teeth, looking ahead, says that they think this is a battle, some kind of game, calling him general. Then Li Yuxin thinks to himself that these bastards want to escape before the battle itself. I dare to look at everything from a high place. And Li Yuxin looks at him and thinks to himself, but even death can't get him out of this never-ending war. He remembers many of his own deaths and how he died each time, thinking that this is why. And even if his body was torn to pieces, he wouldn't be able to stop. I think that otherwise this hell will never end. And Li Yuxin opened his eyes and raised his head, turning to hide the kings and shouting that he won't repeat it. He looks at them with a serious face and says that all the knights should gather in front of the castle gate. Li Yuxin stands and shouts at the soldiers, telling them that they must bring all the horses out in front of the gate and must do it now. After that, many soldiers stand in shock and do not understand what is happening. Huge walls are drenched with raindrops, while the gate is closed with bars. A huge number of enemy troops are coming to their feet, dressed in black armor and carrying weapons, spears and swords. Then one of the horses screams. A lot of soldiers are bringing out brown horses, while they more or less obey and go ahead. They put them all right in front of the barred gate, and each soldier became one horse. Then the captain, who is standing nearby, says, looking at a man with black hair and a beard, that they have collected all the horses, and that this man says yes, sir, as ordered, but. And then the captain wonders why, but. And the man, clearly worried, looks at the open doors, saying that the matter is that one mare that resists and refuses to budge. Then they look inside and see a huge white horse standing at the end of the wall, while three knights are lying in the carriage, obviously injured, writhing in pain. The captain looks at it and says it's a horse with great surprise. He looks at her, this white horse with a cross scar on its head, out of breath and says that. This is the general's horse. As the knights try to get up, she approaches them. I need a very hard look. Lena lets out a pair of her nostrils. Li Yuxin comes down the stairs. And all the troops with their horses stand and look at him with great surprise. He goes lower and lower, holding his weapons, after which he tells them all that they are all here. And the captain, looking up at him, says that, yes, sir, and what are they planning to do? Li Yuxin tells them that everything is fine now and they should open up. The captain is very surprised by these words and asks him what they need to open. Li Yuxin points his finger at the gate, where there is a single guard with a spear. He smiles and says to open that gate over there. After that, they stand on top and, looking at the entire armed army, says that everyone should listen to the order of their general. They will open this gate and then go out on it. After that, many soldiers stand in shock and are clearly afraid to do this, while the enemy troops are getting closer, trying to climb the walls and falling from them. He says they will break if they take advantage. For now, their opponents will be focused on attacking the walls, and then with a serious look, he says that after. It's a multi-level system, he recalls, after which it doesn't end. Li Yuxin notices that at the end of it, Blackwin is sitting on a huge black horse in armor with a large axe. Li Yuxin tells Tom that they will go straight to Blackwin's bed. He shouts the same thing, remembering the one-eyed Blackwine. Li Yuxin attacks with his weapon, he once again started to burn with a blue aura. He gritted his teeth as he continued to attack, thinking to himself, what is this monster? He tried to attack Blackwin, who was clenching his teeth, and while looking at Li Yuxin, he took the blow. Li Yuxin shouts that they will defeat him and drive the invaders from their lands. While all the soldiers with horses are standing and listening to Li Yuxin, who is standing on the stairs, he shouts at them that this is the only way to survive. Then he falls silent, picking up his weapon. And in the stable, too, there is silence and dust rises. It was the general's white horse. She walks slowly forward. Then he notices something. She begins to breathe very hard, looking and opening her mouth. After that, one of the soldiers sits on a horse 
and his hands are shaking very much. This is noticed by other soldiers, saying that he has very much, they become more expensive, a lot of soldiers stand in shock, and one of them falls to the ground, that he really wants them to go out and fight and survive. Then Joseph smiles and starts laughing, saying that this is a plan in general, what he thinks about it. Li Yushin stands there looking at Joseph in shock, and he starts to smile as he says to him. What, is he crazy because he wants to die so badly? The captain is worried, looking at Joseph, and tells him that as a second in command, this is how to talk to your general. Joseph starts yelling at Li Yushin, saying that he is using so many troops and that he wants to clean up the enemy base. So far, all the soldiers are very worried and have moved on to be sewn in. Joseph screams at him that he's a fool, that he can't see past his own nose. Yiddish, despite all this, after listening, shouts to him that it is they who cannot fully realize what situation they are in. He keeps yelling at them, seeing what he says they have no brains at all. They really think Blackwine will let them live. He shouts about what if they humbly bow their heads after he cuts his throat. After which, Joseph begins to stutter and get very worried, saying that well. Many soldiers stand up in shock and look at each other, mouths open or clenched. They all remember the black winds and how cruel he is when he raises his huge axe. I think it's for this freak. The mercy of supplication means nothing. Remembering how he kills so many soldiers. He slits the throats of Captain Joseph and a host of allied troops. Li Yushin looks on and shouts at them that it won't work. The doors from the stable break down and dust appears everywhere, along with fragments of that door. The soldiers notice this and are very much shocked, surprised, opening their mouths. They see the general's white horse coming out. Dust surrounds her everywhere, and she goes forward. Joseph looks at it in surprise and says that it is indeed the old general's horse. They look at how furious she is and get up on two legs, starting to clap. The old general's horse gets up on two legs while a lot of knights try to run up to it, but they can't do it. She starts screaming, opening her mouth and letting off steam as everything collapses and dust rises everywhere. The soldiers are perplexed, saying that this is the general's horse and why it is here, thinking about how she was able to get out. Li Yushin notices her look with surprise. Joseph shout whatever the fuck they're doing, and they need to catch this animal quickly and calm it down. After that, many soldiers run to the horse, but she won't let me near her. She jumps over these soldiers and runs forward. She kicks one of the soldiers, sending him flying. He takes a lot of damage and is in a lot of pain. After that, the man who followed your life with black hair and a black beard and a hat. He stands in front of her and grits his teeth. Hard, watching screams, hey, what's that brute real for? While he tries to serve it, he says that he can hardly stand still. After that, this horse hits this man with a blow of its head and he flies up, losing your cap and getting hit in the stomach. Many knights try to grab her by throwing ropes at her. They get caught in the ropes and grab her by the neck while she tries to resist. They take these ropes and several people and shout about what needs to be pulled. It's obviously hard for them, but they keep pulling, while the horse resists with a huge cross-shaped scar on its forehead. The knights try to pull her out, but she stands still. The soldiers watch this while holding the rope and goes into shock, opening their mouths and shouting that it didn't even move. And where the hell is this power coming from? After which, Li Yushin notices this and gradually approaches, he jumps down from the steps, after which he takes out his blade. The knights notice Li Yushin flying over them, and he uses his blade to spin, he cuts all the ropes, and the knights fall to the ground. He lands to conquer the king's fall. They wonder what Li Yushin has just done, and he stands there in silence. He turns to them and tells them that if they just watch, I think they'll be the first to be trampled to death by this horse. The captain runs up to Li Yushin and tries to grab him with his hands, telling him not to approach her because this is an unusual horse. Li Yushin listens to him and looks at this horse, thinking to himself, why on earth is it even so mad? He watches her as she breathes heavily, and I think the way she looks like she's trying to say something, her eyes start to glow blue. After which, many sounds of enemy troops can be heard from the gate. They are already close to the wall, and they are being selected along it. While they are still trying to fight off the wall, poking spears at them and throwing stones at the stairs. Those confidently rise, protecting with their shields. It's a white horse, and when he hears it, his eyes start to glow blue, and he grits his teeth and stares. Li Yushin starts to smile as he lowers his head and thinks to himself, which is understandable. The horse runs forward and directly at Li Yushin, while the latter blocked its path and extended his arms. The captain shouts at him that it's very dangerous, he thinks to himself that this kid can't die here. The horse continues to run straight at Li Yushin. After that, she runs through him while he continues to stand. He grabs her by the rope that ran from behind that horse, around her neck. And with a firm grip, he uses the blue aura to pull her towards him, pulling with all his strength. And then the horse stops. He manages to stop her, and she abruptly starts to turn in Li Yushin's direction. She stomps her hooves very loudly, and all the knights nearby run their fears with embroidery these sounds. The horse stood in front of Lai Yushin and planted its hooves directly on the ampule. 
she doesn't let him get close to her. For now, Li Yuxin is using the blue aura to draw her in. Li Yuxin starts to smile, pulling her towards him with one hand. Speaking of which, it's fun. He looks at her and thinks you feel the same way he does. He looks at this horse as it looks and holds on breathlessly. He thinks to himself, does she really want to go crazy on this damn battlefield one more time? He smiles and says that even in this hellhole, there are still those who are worthy of respect. After which Li Yuxin smiles and pulls her to him with the rope, thinking to himself, what then? After which he yells at her to come with him. He remembers Blackwin and the huge number of troops, thinking that until the end of this battle, on which death itself marches. He keeps smiling as he looks at the horse and says let's cut this path from the lion's throat, and to his heart. After that, the horse looks at him and clearly understands something, the scar on its eye and on its forehead showing brighter and brighter. Li Yuxin, without flinching, pulled himself to the rope stance. It uses mana. Then the horse sees in this man. Mystery they are very similar, he is also covered in scars. And the horse lowers its head, after which all the soldiers are shocked to see all this. Joseph stands there in shock, gritting his teeth and clearly very scared, talking about what it is. He sees the white horse drop to the ground. Joseph stands there in shock, not understanding what is happening, he is with him scared, and he says it's just impossible. And all the soldiers around notice the way Lai Yuxin is being confronted. The horse gets to its knees. The director stands in shock at what he sees on the monitors of natural resources, thinks to himself that what the hell is a simulator. He thinks it's impossible, it just can't be. After that, many allied brown horses run forward. It was an allied army with a brown color, holding spears in their hands and attacking enemy soldiers. They collide, shouted, and run ahead. Ahead of them, Li Yuxin is running on a new horse. Rita looks ahead. While holding this horse, he uses a blue aura, thinking that he is riding a horse for the first time and it is interesting in reality to feel the same way. He thinks that they feel no discomfort and fear of falling. He looks at this white horse in surprise, thinking that how is this, and really. He looks at the horse's mane and the way it turns a little towards him, thinking to himself that it is because of it that it adjusts its own pace, because it feels its clumsiness. After which, Li Yuxin smiles, calling her just a horse and kicks her. He keeps smiling and tells her that it's okay, she can run as she wants. And at that moment, he thinks to himself that thanks to the heightened senses that he was just able to awaken, he doesn't need to worry so much anymore. After that, this horse also uses a blue aura. She understands what Li Yuxin said. And strain your legs, it accelerates even faster. Li Yuxin smiles and takes out his weapon from its scabbard. They are rushing forward. After that, they get closer and closer to the enemy army, which is trying to climb the stairs to the wall, running around it from the side. And then all those who have run on horses notice that Li Yuxin starts to break away, and not really surprised by this, looking at how fast he accelerates, they are perplexed by this and how much Li Yuxin on a white horse runs fast. Both of them are glowing blue, and Li Yuxin is holding a spear and pointing it forward, after which he shouts that they will break and a lot of enemy soldiers still trying to climb the stairs, noticing that the enemy army is running at them from the side. It was Li Yuxin with his allies, after which he throws a spear directly at them. He hits one of them squarely in the chest, whereupon he instantly dies, writhing in pain. The spear starts to spin, accelerating more and more as the knight is in pain, and she breaks this knight into pieces, after which this spear flies on and continues to kill many soldiers. It bursts forward, twisting and creating a huge vortex, which the soldiers fall into, are torn apart. After that, the soldiers who got caught on the wall, they strike, after which their weapons are all covered in blood, but do not kill one of the allied knights, after which they finish off two with a spear. They still hit the wall. One of the soldiers falls from the wall, dropping his spear. And so far, the allied forces are fighting back with replica bows and stones, and they are trying to figure out the stairs using shields. One of the soldiers falls down. He gets right into the middle of these soldiers as they pile up and climb higher and higher. They all keep running out to storm the wall screaming about it. And he's not standing behind you on a huge black armored horse, Blackwin. He watches this with an emotionless face. It depends on how. Their defenses are falling. He thinks to himself that with this speed, the fortress will be finished. And he thinks to himself, so does Li Yuxin. He grits his teeth, trying to find it. He thinks to himself, what's wrong with tucking in his left eye. He remembers Li Yuxin's father, who artificially fought and was able to take his eye. He was smiling in battle, saying that this guy. He looks up at the sky, grits his teeth, says that his descendants now the hour has come when he will cut his throat. He remembers different soldiers. One of them is in golden armor with a smile and shining eyes with long hair, and two are full on bald. I think to myself that, however, he has heard rumors that his son has a reputation for being a pathetic spineless scum. Then Blackwine, with a serious face, opens his only eye, looks at it and says that if this is so, then pick up your axe and use the red aura. He thinks about how he'll just rip out both of his eyes first. 
He uses his red aura and moves forward a little bit, saying that and so. However, the spear that Lai Yu Shin threw swirls even more, killing more and more people. And it lands on the floor, sticking into the ground, leaving behind a huge mountain of corpses, while many soldiers stand in shock and do not understand how it happened. They breathe heavily as they watch this and move away a little. And they notice Li Yushin on a white horse jumping forward right at those soldiers, as long as they don't understand what's going on. Li Yushin smiles and sighs as he looks at them. The soldiers point a gun at them and shout that it's an ambush and they have to stop it. Li Yushin then throws a punch. He cuts through a lot of soldiers with one swing. Blood splashes everywhere and the horse jumps further over these soldiers, left in the air. After that, many of the soldiers stand in incomprehension and bewilderment from the fact that their weapons broke. Several of them have already been killed. The horse continues to jump on these knights, killing them, while the others try to escape. In addition to jumping on them, she hits them with her head, thereby breaking their skull by coat, screaming in pain. And the two of them leave behind a pile of corpses, butchered. And the knights surrounding them stand in shock, pointing their weapons directly at them. One of the knights in front shouts that he is alone, and they must not retreat, surrounding him and killing him. After which, they all run at them, pointing their weapons forward. They continue to shout, holding up their spears, and Les notices when looking down at them. He changes his position and the horse understands this by lowering himself a little. Standing in the midst of a mountain of corpses, they turn around abruptly as the soldiers run at them. He picks up one of the spears stuck in the ground, after which, Li Yushin starts yelling very hard while looking ahead. He swings with that spear, still shouting, and Blackwind stands there with a smile on his face, shrouded in a red aura that makes his hair stand on end, smiling and telling him to try not to disappoint him. Descendant of the Reaper, Li Yushin swings the spear with all his might, still shouting. Blackwind smiles as he watches, his hair standing on end, wrapped in a red aura, and he tells him to try not to disappoint the Reaper descendant. After that, Li Yushin ran forward on his horse, attacking all the enemies around with this spear. He cuts many of them into several parts. A lot of corpses appear around him, right at his feet, while the others try to defend themselves and move a little away so that they don't get hit by this spear. He sweeps away enemies, killing one by one, cutting their heads and torsos. Enemy soldiers do not have time to react and do anything. Li Yushin continues to attack with his spear, shrouding him in its blue aura. He smiles and looks around, and he thinks to himself that he's just getting started. After that, it tries to surround the enemy troops in the center, and then continues to run forward, killing one after the other and already with a bloody trail of corpses. The allied soldiers who arrived at Li Yushin's side stand there in surprise, their mouths hanging open at what they see. One of them turns to the others and shouts that the general has paved the way for them and they must run forward after him. After that, the captain, along with Joseph and another soldier, run into the huge number of corpses that Li Yushin killed. They run along the paved path, cutting through the remaining enemies. Because of Lai Yushinui, they are shouting that if they don't want to die, then they must not fall behind. After that, Li Yushin, who is hurting the people in front, shouts to the others behind him that they should hurry up and go full speed straight to Blackwine. These soldiers were shocked and very angry at the way they were looking and raising their spears directly at them. Li Yushin picks up his sword and spear, raises them to the top and starts shouting. After applying more blue aura to them, he hits them by hitting the floor, causing a huge number of knights to fly apart in a burst of blue flash. Blood splatters everywhere, which one falls on Blackwind, Weed, while everything around is covered in smoke and looks forward in surprise, thinking to himself that just now whose aura was it. After that, the remaining soldiers run to him on horses and shout to the general, very scared. He looks at them in surprise and asks what kind of circus is going on and how to understand it. The knights stand in shock, gritting their teeth and opening their mouths, saying that they were the ones who were ambushed by enemy troops. Blackwin is angry, from Tsoknov says that this is nonsense, they generally carry. And who was the one who bravely allowed the ambush? He thinks to himself, what the scum of this castle is such a greyhound. After which, one of the knights tells him that he didn't believe it either and is surprised by the news, saying that, however, it is true and the one leading them is none other than Li Yushin. When he runs forward, we attack a lot of enemy troops, cutting them into pieces. They fly away, dying and screaming in pain. After which, Blackwine goes into shock, he lights up with a red aura, and looking down at his troops, his hair rises, and he says, is Li Yushin really leading the troops? He is very angry and says that if he lied to him, he will rip out his lying tongue. After that, one of the commanders, very frightened, shouts to the general that he is completely sure of this. And Blackwind, looking at this, smiles. After which, he wraps himself in a red aura and starts laughing very loudly while looking up at the sky. He watches the sky and stop laughing with tight teeth thinking to himself, what the f***? What kind of bastard even dared to say that Li Yushin is a coward? 
Is he saying he's a complete nutcase? And Blackwin continues to ponder as he watches Li Yushin break through a huge number of enemy troops at the breakpoint, killing a lot of them and sending a lot of corpses flying around as they aim their yells at them. Thinking about it, no sane person would dare even think of breaking through here. And Blackwin smiles and lowers his head, saying that even so, he can't believe that he personally came for him, and it's commendable that he should prepare for some small surprise. The brown-robed allied troops were surrounded by enemy soldiers everywhere, their spears pointed at them. They realize this and stop on their horses for a bit while she attacks them. Li Yushin continues to run forward with a smile, destroying their spears and killing everyone in the way. And a lot of enemy heads are flying straight at the soldiers who are trying to defend themselves and will stain them all in blood. Li Yushin thinks to himself that it doesn't matter 1000 or 10,000. He grits his teeth, starting to breathe heavily, thinks about stopping him if they dare. And yet, no matter what, he looks ahead with his blue eyes, thinking that he will go ahead right after the geek. After that, one of the enemy people picks up the pipe. He starts blowing it, making a sound while standing on his horse. After which, many enemy troops lower their spears to the sky and stand at attention. Li Yushin notices this and is very surprised by what is happening, starting to look around. He sees what is behind these troops and has launched a lot of arrows while they are retreating back. These arrows land on the ground, sticking into it, and Li Yushin is surprised by this. He sees how the arrows hit clearly near the knights forming up next to each other. They have white threads showing that they are giving up. After which, he notices Black Wine standing in the back of three knights. It was three people on brown horses and in the middle was a man with long spear hair and golden armor. To his right was an elderly man, fully armored and wearing a helmet with long gray hair and a goatee. And on the left was a very tall man, all red and also wearing armor. Then Blackwin points with two fingers. Red in the aura, he lowers them. And Li Yushin runs forward. Blackwin smiles and says that means it really was his aura. Li Yushin then looks on and shouts at him that he is Blackwin. He continues to run forward, pointing his sword, holding it out. He thinks to himself that all he needs is his weapon. A lot of allied troops have gathered together and are very surprised that they see a lot of enemy soldiers and the allies open their mouths in surprise. The director, who is watching everything that is happening with his employees sitting next to him, open their mouths in surprise. Blackwine emitting a red aura from one eye rises into the hair towards the sky. He picks up his weapon and heads forward, thinking about what he's going to do. Li Yushin gritted his teeth, running inwardly and thinking about how he still couldn't fully control this spark of power that smolders in him. How does he think that it will be enough for him in just a moment? Then he raises his weapon and asks, he asks to concentrate on the point of this sword. He raises his sword, covered in blood, and this blue aura appears on it. The air flow increases all over the place, and Blackwind steps forward using the red aura, raising his axe. He starts to smile, and through the smoke, his red eyes and angry grin appear. When he talks about what's great, he thinks to himself that he needs to be so inspired at least once. Blackwind then shouts at Li Yushin to fully enjoy tearing him to pieces. After which, Li Yushin starts shouting, using his weapon, runs forward with all his strength, jumping on Blackwind. And Blackwind the attacker from below uses his axe, tries to hit him one. Their attacks collide, creating a huge flash and many soldiers are blinded by this and surprised everywhere, smoke rises and many chips of dust and stones fly off. 